in the middle of a royal park in Italy, there is a beautiful God-given racetrack. Italy, the home of speed, known all the way around the world. And it is about to host its 70th official Formula One Grand Prix. It's the eighth round of the championship, which makes it an official world championship. And this circuit built in 110 days in 1922. We used to race around the old banking. Now, of course, we race around this fantastic 3.7 mile circuit. It's the 70th official Grand Prix. It's the 69th race to take part around Monza. And it's a 3.6 mile circuit, 5.793 kilometers, two DRS sound zones, one out of the second Lesmo, one the next one down towards the first two corners. 11 turns, minimal elevation change, but the start of the race is going to be the most important one, the Retafilio. It's a tight, twisty chicane, and it comes a cropper for many drivers. 2011, the last dramatic start we had here. Followed further back at the Dalla Rosia chicane last year, Hamilton tried to overtake Charles Leclerc around the outside. Leclerc forcing Hamilton off the track. He got the black and white flag for that one. And the Ascari chicane as well. Sebastian Vettel spinning out of contention. A miserable weekend. It looks to repeat itself this year. He tagged the back of Lance Stroll. Three tyre compounds to keep your eyes on this weekend. The hard, the soft and the medium. The hard is the white, the medium is the yellow, the soft is the red. They are the C1, the C2 and C3 going from hard to soft. Let's take a look at how they line up on the grid then for the eighth round of the championship. Lewis Hamilton on pole position for the 94th time in his career on the first row. Alongside him is his Mercedes teammate Valtteri Bottas. The second row, Carlos Sainz alongside Sergio Perez. Their battle between McLaren and Racing Point is heating up. Max Verstappen starts fifth, one of his lowest qualifiers of the year, alongside Lando Norris in sixth. The fourth row sees Danny Ricciardo alongside Lance Stroll. And completing the top ten sees Alexander Rabon and Pierre Gasly. Pierre Gasly in the Alpha Tour the highest of the qualifying of the Italian teams. His teammate right behind him on the sixth row with Danny Kvyat alongside Esther Van Ocon, who does not have a penalty for blocking Kimi Raikkonen, who starts 14th. Charles Leclerc on home soil for Ferrari starts in 13th place. And then we get the two Hasses on the seventh row. Kevin Magnussen is alongside Roman Grosjean. And then Sebastian Vettel, 17th on the grid, alongside Antonio Giovinazzi, one of the lowest qualifyings for Ferrari since 1984. And Williams in their last race, owned by the Williams family, at the back with George Russell alongside Nicholas Latifi. Lewis Hamilton seeking his 90th career Formula 1 victory. Michael Schumacher also claimed his 90th year back in Monza in 2006. Famously, of course, he announced his retirement from Formula 1 just after. The first front row start for Valtteri Bottas here at Monza and the first for Mercedes at this track since 2016. Carlos Sainz starts third. It's equaling his highest Formula 1 career grid position as well. He's alongside Sergio Perez, who is going for it today. He finished second in 2012, his best result in Formula 1, of course. Megan Birch not with us this weekend, so alongside me in the coverage box once, once again is Ian Birch. Good afternoon, Dad. An interesting race ahead of us today. Yep, there's a few uh, little scenarios, isn't there? Yep. <coughs> if you just have a clue, though. Mm. It's an interesting Grand Prix ahead, the top ten yeah, starting on South. First of all, um, will we get, uh, how many will finish the race yep. without blowing their engines? That's another good point as well. How many will actually, because the party modes have been banned, but the teams can now elect to run the it has higher or lower. Yeah. As far as we know, it has backfired because Mercedes is now confident. Toto was just saying that he's confident that um, they can run this mode all through at the Grand Prix. And before, they used to run it for... Only 90 seconds at a time, so... And that's now they can do it for the whole race as the clock strikes 10 past 3. The formation lap begins, and it is going to be a tricky one today for anybody to beat the two Mercedes. Hamilton going for his sixth win of the season out of eight races. Tyres, uh, it's a one-stop. Um, I don't know if the, the strategy is uh, going to be effective for the, um, for the medium tyre. Um, 
They can just, I've, yeah, go on. I've, I think most of them are started on the softs. Is, is the Mercedes the, the only ones that are not starting? They on actually the went back out again and qualified on the softs. Oh, ah, yeah. good. The top ten start on the softs. The only drivers to start on the hard compound tyre, if I look at my monitor below, is Danny Kvyat in 11th place and, Rome and Sebastian Mattel starting in 17th place. On the medium tyres, Raikkonen, Magnussen, Grosjean, Germanazzi, Russell and Latifi. So, presumably, we're going to go to between laps 20, 25, 30 yeah, right about that. on um, the, the, the softs that they qualified on yesterday and then move on to the hard tyres for the rest of the race. So it's a one-stop strategy, so it'll all be racing towards the pit stops. That's going to be the advantage. But we shouldn't have um, the tyre problems that we had at... Uh, no. The downforce isn't as great at this, this, this race. Very low downforce circuit. Should be quite an easy run down towards uh, the... The bigger wings one. are back. Yep, and that was what we saw a bit last weekend at Belgium. But we know exactly that Ferrari are going to struggle here as well. They're fighting for f uh, third place in the constructors between McLaren and Racing Point. Of course, it's going to be between McLaren and Racing that, Point. Though. Yeah, go on. The rubbish. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, they're only two points clear of Renault. And Renault are out qualified the on the grid. are up in arms about what's going on. They've been told that 2021, 2022 before they mm. can make any improvement. And to the Tafosi, that is unacceptable, and to the rest of us, really, because Ferrari, although I don't really talk them up a lot, um, they are very important to Formula One. And of course, it's Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton sharing the record here. There's Claire Williams starting her last Grand Prix as team principal uh, before the Ferrari, before the family back away from the sport. It's going to be an emotional one for her today. It's going to be a strange one next week once she gets back um, home and she realises that uh, that's it. Mm. And uh, I'm sure we'll see Claire back once she's had a rest. The last time she said she missed a Grand Prix was the 2011 Brazilian Grand Prix. She took over in 2012 as the team principal, the deputy team principal, with her father Frank. Frank left the sport in 2014 but remained honorary team principal. This is the family's last weekend. They come to the grid then two by two. As we line up, now 53 laps ahead of us, if we get under a 1 hour 14 minute lap time, a race time, we will have the fastest ever race in Formula 1 history. I think there's something to go against that in, in yep. the fact that um, there is so much, um, we've got some... Brake smokes for the TV. The, the brakes are smoking on the Williams already. Um, this thing, I don't feel. I don't feel we can go without a safety car in this. I don't agree with that. All the cars are. All the cars are lined up on the grid. Then the green flag is at the back. The five red lights come on. There's usually a three-second pause after, and the race will be underway. Action at Monza. Good getaway actually from Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz. McLaren's having the best start. Danny Ricciardo takes to the grass. Almost a repeat of Australia 2019 with taking his front wing off. Carlos Sainz up into second place. Bonza's fighting for third with Lando Norris. Norris has the inside into the Metafilio. Verstappen's off the track just like 12 months ago. Hamilton leads the way. The Williams is slight contact with the two Haas cars. Leclerc goes to the inside of Raikkonen and Vettel's been pushed back to 19th place at the start. Albon coming under pressure as well. Great start from the two Ferrari to from the two McLaren. Lando goes around the outside and takes Bottas at the inside of the Della Roggia. McLaren 2-3. Bottas falling back. Here comes Sergio Perez into the first Lesmo. That was an inc incredible start from McLaren. Bottas failing to get away well in the line. And off goes Bottas now at the exit of the second Lesmo. That's led Perez through. Here comes Ricardo. No DRS yet. Going to try to go to the outside. Ricardo more like a rally driver here today. Yeah, I feel that uh, Bottas... Bottas, I think, has got a problem because he now let... Yeah, Bottas through. has clearly got a problem. He, the, the guy that usually gets away fastest was slowest today of the top ten. And, uh, Verstappen dives through on the inside. He's got the toe. It's a bit like IndyCar. You lose momentum, you're going to get swamped. That's a terrible was start. Was it definitely Max that got shunted off? Because I thought it might look like... It look, I think it... Well, Albon's dropped further back. Puncture oh, or that's something. That's what's wrong with the Valtteri. He's got a puncture. Well, he, he's clearly... He's kept on going down the start-finish straight. Down towards turn one again. I'm trying to see if... Oh, that's <coughs> around the outside. That's Stroll making contact. I think it's... It, it, is it rear, right, rear left? 
I think so, yeah. You can see a little bit of blistering as well on Bottas. So, great start from the two McLarens. I saw Lando Norris get an absolutely tremendous start. He got the best reaction time. Sainz, on the other hand, was able to go around the slow starting Bottas, but it's all pretty much calmed down. The two McLarens and Perez are the only three cars that challenged uh, Lewis at the start. Um, Bottas fell back. Um, Verstappen lost three places at the start with that little... I think he did go off the track, come, yeah. ...come together with... Who we, we're not sure who, who we came together with. Both the Red Bulls have dropped places. Albon's dropped six. Verstappen's dropped three. We need to replay the start, but it looked to me I Verstappen. think it was the Toro... Toro... The Alfa Torre, yeah. Alfa Torre. There is a smoking Sergio Perez. Like, it's just noticed it coming out the back. It keeps smoking. It did that back in Austria, but it hasn't done it for a while. <laughs> but a very, very interesting start. If you remember, the, uh, the that's the Merck from last year. Yeah. And the Mercs from last year also used to smoke in the first three or four laps. He's got it all to do. Oh, well, we didn't hear from Bottas at Team Radio there, but it seems like everything's okay now. Hamilton, fastest lap. Yeah, he kept saying that there was a puncher, puncher, puncher. And there was no sign of but it. There was no sign of it, although that, that, there is something, I think he's correct about that th that left rear. Round the outside, and now becomes the inside into the uh, retrofilio. Verstappen gets ahead of Lance Stroll, and that was a good run, but as we come through the curve of the Grande, it's going to be Stroll, who's got the run, and he pulls to the outside. Verstappen clipping the grass almost, aggressively defending the inside. And I don't know if Verstappen's tracking's off a little bit, but that Red Bull not looking so smooth, and not smooth at the exit of Dallarogia. Yeah, those, the, the, in all the races in the, in the pre-race of calendar in this uh, this tournament of uh, of uh, yeah. Monza um, lots at that turn there's a, been lots of um, of the runoff being pushed onto the track and um, what happened it was for Stappen and Albon both yeah. of them getting wide off the track but Bartas, what has happened Bartas never got going on the start look he just he just drags at the start as we're seeing the replays just pulls away too slowly great start from Sainz and uh, Norris got a good start as well what has happened to the grass at that turning because you know the runoff with the with the um, little concrete um, mm. marbles um, is good yeah it's effective and with the, but there's too much tarmac uh, yeah, there is, and that was a label to what happened with Albo going off the track as well as Verstappen. Kevin Magnussen has dropped right to the back of the grid, and I think he's actually gone into the pit lane for some new tyres. Look at McLaren when they realised they got a great start. Now, this is what I didn't like. Pierre Gasly on the inside, he gets in sort of a swamp effect, because here comes, that's Perret, so that's Stroll locking up, and then he touches the back of Albon. So it was Albon ah, flying so across it the was, track. It was Perez. You were right with the Alfa Torre. Perez, not, not, um, he in because he doesn't have to no and then we had the situation where um it was a it was just a concertina effect three into one doesn't go gasly later went off the track but a great move from lando norris on the inside of the that Dan was Washia. a bad move from max verstappen actually because he should of, th of the three of them he should have mm. been the one that um realized that three into one, one doesn't, doesn't go, go yeah. in that corner Norris, though, overtake of the race already. He did it absolutely perfectly as well. And uh, there is Sergio Perez jumping on the opportunity presented to him by Lando. Bottas comes across to defend, and sort of Perez has to back out of it. It's lap four, race control, incident involving Gasly and Albon, no investigation necessary. That's an interesting call. Uh, it's one of those first lap things, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I believe that there's too many cars in the scenario, yeah. so. Um, it's just not necessarily it the two that are involved that cause it. So they just let it go completely at the moment. So we're in a slipstream battle. Bottas with a lot of work to do. He's lost it on the start. And that just sort of confirms that Hamilton, 2.3 seconds ahead of Carlos Sainz on his way at the moment to win. As Bottas is ready. So they're going to go long on this first stint on the softs. That's a brave call, because I don't think those tyres can do a longer stint. The only thing I can think of as well is that... Um, the tyre warmer on that f that left rear yeah. um, wasn't at the same temperature as the others, and so um, we've got an uneven grip for him. Um, also, uh, if you look at the front left of Valtteri, um, he's got this little um, spot on it already. So, um, I from it looks like he's had to brake hard at one point in the in the scenario. 
minute of the first two laps. He's closing down though on the back of Danny Ricardo, but uh, Renault Power in a great position here at the moment. McLaren double podium as it stands, and I don't see anyone stopping them today for one of them getting a podium. And my money's on Carlos Sainz, best of the weekend so far, and was second and third as well in the FP3 session we had. So it's all looking quite good as well. Uh, so Hamilton, Sainz, Norris, Perez, Ricardo in the top five, and Sebastian Vettel down into 17th place. He's gained a couple of positions, but after he got I don't think that's back. an unusual place for, for Vettel at the moment. No, it's it's the order player. You know, no. it's about right for the. Um, this one's going to sting. Vettel is being passed by the We have an issue on the left hand side. We are left. And there's an issue on Vettel's tyre, and he's just out dragged George Russell, the TV in the background watching on, and he's off! Off! A big, big one! That's Vettel locking up at the front of the Retafilio and destroying about three bollards, and I think the Ferrari dream is going about to get worse, as I think he's got a brake failure. I don't think he had any brakes there. We heard on the radio a failure with the front right, and it's happened again. Sebastian Vettel is going to have another weekend from hell in Monza and more embarrassingly next weekend it's Ferrari's 1000th race. And there is no longer a chicane there. No. So, bang. <laughs> oh, look at that, that failure. Was something came off. That looked to be like a brake a break spring. Yeah, it looked like... Oh, it's on fire. on fire. Yeah, it was a clip. Yeah. It was a, it was a clip. It was part of the hose mountain. And... Uh, he went for the brakes. There was none there. And yeah, it, it's, it looks like... It's just like he's locked up the brakes there. Um, that's not been fitted right. No. Obviously. And that's going to be an instant retirement because the brakes now on fire and the car's on fire. Uh, it's not the same, a sort of part that fails no. normally. No. So it's obviously been fitted in with an issue. Yeah. Verstappen closing in on Bottas, Hamilton a 1, 24, 8, 9, 0. So I'm hoping that Vettel Paul gets into the pit lane because we really don't want a safety car. Yeah, but he, he will be burning fluid yeah. rather than dropping it. Yeah, so that's, that's a, one, oh, that is one thing. That polystyrene is all over the track coming into the Dalla Rosia uh, area, sorry, the Cup de Grande before Dalla Rosia. Um, unless a large bit gets in the air intake, I don't think it should mm, be should any be problem. Fine. Should be fine. Uh, Vettel, I can just tell you, has now been passed by Magnussen. Vettel very slowly coming into the pit lane, but with no brakes, he's crawling on the on our timing monitor. He's got to retire. He is. He's in surely, pit lane. unless it's an electronic brake break by wire problem. Vettel's he's got to retire. Surely, he, he's cruising. Vettel's cruising, and there he is. Look at the top of the screen. Look, he coming comes. in, and this is going to be a retirement. This is going to hurt. This is really going to hurt Ferrari. He's having to come in so slowly because he's got no brakes. I don't think the engine's on. I think he's just cruising in. He's and on. He's on limp mode. Magnussen has been in the pit lane, by the way, so he put on a new set of tyres. He had a puncture, which is why he's 31 seconds behind Latifi. What do you think about it? Even limp mode, if you've got no brake... It's going to be, just keep rolling. They've stopped it. Yeah. Sebastian, he took his, yeah. He took, his, he took his foot off the accelerator and let it roll the last bit. Now, they're having a quick look at the rear left of the car, and it's, I don't, there's no point. It's, a, it's, it's terminal, this. Yeah. They've, they've got the fire extinguishers on the back. You've already had a fire in those brakes. He's out. And, you know... They, they can't do anything about that. All they can do is um, put a new... Si oh. He went through those with quite speed, didn't he? And yeah, surprised they, the front wind didn't break. say, there's no chicane there now. No, you're right. I've been thinking that had happened all weekend. And it's happened. You were but saying... I thought yeah. Valtteri might do it. Yeah, locking up, but... Uh, you were saying, you have been saying all weekend about the, the bollards down at turn one because there's no longer a chicane and a time penalty for Alexander Arbon of five seconds. Causing the collision? Uh, he said no investigation necessary, so what's this reason for? As we see Sebastian Vettel get out of the car and failing to leave a car width at, uh, to the edge of the track. So that must be for hitting... Now, I don't, well, no, he's that's being penalty. blamed for his, 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 for his own, going yeah. off. By not, he was actually a little bit in front uh, of the car on the right, wasn't he? Yeah, that was, if anything, that so, was Perez's fault. So he, he caused, they're saying he caused Perez to back out of something. We've got I a, never saw that. We've got a yellow flag in the first sector, so it's all going off in just eight laps of this Grand Prix. I'm having a look on the driver tracker. I can't see any stop cars and I can't see anything. It's gone green now, apparently. Maybe the marshals are out there sweeping the track quickly. 
as Sergio Perez with the DRS has the advantage. Look how thin the DRS is this weekend because you just don't need it. There was Marshalls down at turn one recovering some of the bollards and putting new ones in place. So that was great work by the Italian Marshalls. Look, there's the new bollards in place. And I think they have become a chicane at the moment. Look at that. It's ridiculous. So Sebastian Vettel is officially out of the Italian Grand Prix. One Ferrari left in now on lap nine. And look at Perez trying to go around the outside. The hopes of Italy are actually only with Alfa Romeo. Yeah. And and Alfa Tari or whatever the call. I would Alfa Tari and, and Alfa Romeo, both of them. Yeah. But I would also I would I would agree with Alfa Tari. They're in tenth place and eleventh place at the moment. So they are the best scoring Italian team at the moment. And there's the Royal Park. That's a beautiful bit of a uh, uh, building as well, just for the exit. We're racing in a park as well, and also we there's ornamental yeah. gates that look very similar mm. to that. So whoever designed designed the park. Um, put them at more than one place in the park because that's clearly not the entrance to the park. McLaren on the radio. A lot of, yes, a lot of, for lot of families um, taking the chance to be in the park today mm. and um, including a couple of Brits. Probably the best, the closest we're going to get to permanent fans returning because they can hear the cars, watch it on their televisions. Yeah, they also can see the cars at. Um, from one of the hills. Mm, yeah, so it's a best. Like at Austria. Yeah, great, great solution. And it's we not do. a big hill, but it's a hill. Overlook the track. We've got 250 fans here this weekend uh, from doctors and nurses that uh, Italy are paying, Ferrari are paying. Ah, this is what Albon's penalty is for. Going down to turn one, he nerfed Roman Grosjean off the track. Now, I think that was Grosjean getting caught in the in the toe and not knowing he's there. Oh. Big bit of debris flicked up yeah, and, and hit the, the camera. Halo. Yeah, just missed the halo and it broke the camera. Mind you, the halo is there to protect the driver, not the camera. Yes. But um, it, it was it, it, that could. After all, this is the same track that Massa got hurt, isn't it? Uh, one of them, yeah. Massa got injured twice, of course. He, one of them was Mon uh, one of them was Monza in back Which one was the one where the bolt hit him in the forehead? Hungry, hungry. A couple hungry. of that was round three. And we to say hungry is round three. Uh, it's that 10 of 53 though. It's a quick race this one, just an hour and 15 minutes usually. One of the Twitter feeds is just replaying the bollard. The if bollard I can get it quick enough. Over and over again. If I can get it, oh, if I can get it quickly enough, there it is. That's a big impact. I'm surprised it actually didn't break the front wing. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. Can I put Carlos Sainz as, as a major factor to possibly try and win this Grand Prix? Because he's closing the gap between him and Lewis. And if Lewis runs into an issue, Sainz has got five seconds back to Norris. Bottas is we struggling. We knew there would be wins and losers, but what we also knew was that um, in this party mode system, mm. that some teams would turn to a higher party mode to give an artificial position. Yeah. But is that I'm not sure with McLaren, because they did have a massively good party mode for qualifying. Um, and their race mode it, it was always pretty good. Podium in Austria uh, for Lando Norris and podium last year as well. They've been constantly battling fifth places for Norris. Sainz even got a podium, I believe, at some point this year. Uh, but he's just been constantly on it. McLaren really are coming back into form, and I'm looking forward to next year. They've yeah, got, they've got the got chassis. a nice little miss midfield there, yeah. which doesn't have Ferrari, but has... Um, Strangely enough, uh, in sixth position, a Mercedes. Yeah, that's the Bottas's problems. Exactly. What I, was I do say. think it's a tyre warming problem because the, that tyre wouldn't come back for any other reason other than the yeah. fact that it wasn't at the same temperature as the others. One twenty-four eight five two for Hamilton, a new fastest lap of the race so far, and I agree because Bottas now dropping further back and he can't get past. It would explain some of the movements as well because yeah. the, uh, the friction. Of, uh, of a hot tyre um, grips the track better and if you've got one tyre that's not at the same temperature as the others then you've got like a drag effect yeah. on one wheel and I think it was that front left. It could have been a lot better. Sorry, the rear left. The rear left, yeah. Could have been a lot better. Kimi Raikkonen in 2015 started from second place on the grid and went into anti stall and dropped right to the back. But he's not the only one. I didn't have a good start to this Grand Prix because I hurt myself. So. Yeah, you walked into the back of the box and it has got a bit tighter but hopefully by next weekend... It's Megan's bike. Yeah, it's Megan's bike. Well, hopefully by... Well, mine's just behind us. 
I, I, you can't see it though. I've, I've hidden. I'm hidden even quite cleverly at the moment. Uh, as we see at the moment, Bottas chasing down Verstappen. Six tenths of a second at the moment, but it is closing. But this is this is getting a bit silly now. The, it's, we know the toe is important at Monza, but we didn't know that they couldn't pass at Monza. This, this race last year had the most overtakes of the season, and it stood at like It's 53. still only lap 12, though, and yeah. um, the, the overtakes do come um, around about 23 onwards. Yeah, so we're, we're getting to First the five laps, and then there's this little Break, lull, because yeah. the tyres are going off, and then when they start to um, change the tyres, um, we get a few more overtakes. Well, at the moment, we're seeing Bottas, who's stuck in position, but he does have a 100% finish rate at the Italian Grand Prix. Uh, just to quickly say about Sebastian Vettel out of the race, failed to score in 2019 for the first time since 2012, and he finished every race until that point as well. The strange thing is that I don't think I'm psychic at all, but I had a very strange feeling about Valtteri when he was about to get into the car. He was late to get into yeah. the car. And I just thought, there's something wrong here. Everything was and off. I'm glad that all it was, yeah. was things. Was the fact that he got a bad start and the tyres were off. But yeah. he, you're right. He did, he was, well, like me, I was rushing around getting stuff sorted, so I only saw a bit of it. But he did look a bit off and a bit distant today. Mm. I mean, he's sort of been a bit off all weekend long. He never delivered in Q3, but Hamilton had the same mode as him. I as we've know. said before, although they're really professional, you never know what's going on in their own lives. Mm. You know, I mean, that lad's been through a lot. Especially over the past know. year as well. But yeah. he, he seems to be a bit happier. With his divorce and uh, yeah. he seems find, to finding new romance. He's happier this year with uh, Tiffany, it seems, who's the cycling She's a diamond. world champion. She's not here this weekend, by the way. Get it? Yeah, she's Tiffany. A diamond. Yes. She's not here this year. Oh, sorry, this, this weekend. Came. Yeah, she's not here this weekend. It's her, her cycling world championship More has started. More sausages than off the barbecue for Rocco. Yeah, who is here. Uh, we've seen Lewis and his dogs walking around to the exterior of the paddock. Of course, with it being a largely European they season... They are vegetarian sausages. They are vegetarian sausages, yeah. With it being a largely European season... Valtteri said with a wink. Yeah. With, and Lewis looked at them, as you said. Uh, with this being a largely European season, it enables them to drive to every single track on the calendar. And this camp. particular shot that you're looking at now, I remember... Um, it been slightly different when I was a kid. Mm, um, there was no chicanes, and then the chicane sort of went right, left, and now it goes yeah. left, right. Oh, bit of a... Someone kicked the gravel up there, and that, I think, was Sergio Perez, because he just dropped a couple of tenths in the middle sector. Look at his times. Yeah, it dropped a little bit in the second. So, yeah, that's not great at all. At the moment, people on the Insta on the uh, Twitter feed are having sleep emojis at the moment. Oh, what was that? It's on not exciting, is it, at the moment? Somebody just put something on to the... Well, according to the F1 Pit Lane channel, they, the, the F1 Pit Lane channel has just had a major glitch and has already declared Lewis Hamilton the winner. And in box number two, they've got name two and surname. So the surnames returned to Formula One after they glitched back into a name to surname. Yeah. yeah, he used to play. In, he used to drive IndyCar. Name to surname. And he was in Formula One, of course. The surname brothers as well. First what, name, last how name. Many, how many minutes since the start of this broadcast? If I have a look, um, 33. 33, and we're about to mention football. Oh well, Megan, notice it. She's not listening at the moment. But gone. The, 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 the best it's one, at uh, Lewis. The tires, but but it uh, won't be as good for the PU. So just think about that. Yeah. So now the short shift change up early, dull, dull the engine power a bit. Um, but the power unit is optimised to go to. Uh, they don't go anywhere near the 15,000 rev limit. Yeah. So that was just basically sh t Lewis telling, uh, being told by. Um, uh, Bono to just short shift, keep the power unit safe, because the, the the party modes, four laps of party mode is equal to a race distance of 300 kilometres. Um, that yeah, seems to be in, for entertainment purposes. In Scottish football, yeah, go on. right over, over the last five years, there is a guy called Andy Trialist, mm -hmm. who, when it comes up on um, Sky Sports, uh, it says the goal's been scored by a trialist. Oh dear. Oh, is that Ted? Ted. Ability reasons that you're allowed to turn your engine down a bit, but once if you do it, you have to declare the mode to the FIA immediately.
immediately from the time you do it and uh, you're not allowed to do it. It has to be for reliability reasons. A lot of people thinking that that might be a good way around the rule, but uh, I think the FIA take the view that if they, if they see people doing it routinely, they'll clamp down on it. So Ted reporting there that it's actually a reliability problem that they need to turn the engine units to a different setting. But of course, they're not allowed to by the stewards. But what Ted said there was that they have to declare it immediately for and they have to prove it's a reliability issue. I am um, maybe seeing things. Bottas Radio. Bottas with offline when you can. Yeah, I'm doing that all the time. And I think that's, I think the hottest I temperature at 1011, the parabolica, yeah. And he's been told to move offline to try yeah. and cool that engine. Because I saw um, when he braked at that last, yeah. last um, chicane that there was a few whiffs of smoke from the back of that Mercedes. You did say we could be seeing quite a few failures in this Grand Prix. Well, we didn't expect it to be a Mercedes, but it's, no. uh, the, that Mercedes is clearly in trouble. But we've seen this so many times. Oh, he's nervous. James uh, Bono and James Allison, they're nervous on the pit wall. This is worrying me. And this isn't just Mercedes play acting like they did in Belgium. They are f really worried. And I think they're going to be a bit cross. So Lewis worried just, Lewis is just did yeah, his lap. I think they're going to be a bit annoyed with him. 124.626. I'll tell you what, McLaren have currently got their fingers crossed, their toes crossed, their legs crossed, everything, because they're second and third. And if Hamilton pops out the Grand Prix, they could be first and second. Yeah, which would um, be a British <laughs> British team winning. Um, and we've had yeah. a good day for British teams. Teams. Yep. Well, British drivers. We've uh, had three on the podium in the F2 and F3, and uh, congratulations to them all. It was great to see the flag flying again. Bottas with it. Oh! Uh, Bottas on the radio. I can't race with these engine settings. It's a joke. It's a serious issue. Explained by Bottas. He's struggling in the midfield. He's sick at the moment, being caught by Verstappen. They've got problems. They are the same engine settings though that Lewis has. You can't do two, can you? Do two different with the two different cars? Oh, side by side, Albon on the inside and gets through on Leclerc. That's a great move. Really great move. Uh, to answer your question, no. You have to remain at the same setting in both cars. No. But you can change one, but have to give it to the stewards immediately. So that's a bit of a worry. As Albon got through there on the clear for 13th place. So Obviously, Leclerc's dropping. It's obvious that people are going to make mistakes with oh, these yeah, engine yeah. modes because it's a, it's um, a, just a strategy thing that um, they've run through the numbers and thought this is the best strategy of the day. And um, it's not always. It's not, and I'm worried. And I think it's about time we come away from technology. As long as it doesn't happen it. to Lewis. Well, you never know. I'm looking at his sector times. He was down on the first sector. He just did the or, fastest yeah. lap. But he was down in the first sector and only in two corners in that first sector that runs up until here. You see, I think he was I, great. I, I think the Mercs and the McLarens. Oh, Leclerc's been passed by Giovinazzi and Grosjean. And that's because he's in the pit lane. Leclerc, yep. Yeah. And this is going to be for hard tyres. That's early, isn't it? Yeah, very early to put the hards on. He is thinking now... Let's get let's get up and get the overcut, the undercut. Yeah. 2.7 second stop. That could get him as far as 12th place. Yes. <laughs> Back to where he was before he got overtaken by Raikkonen and Albon. So they're clearing. It's so sad. Honest, uh, honest. Uh, um, the teeth he's dropped in. The teeth he's just come into the pit lane as well. That's why he's now. I remember the battles between Williams and Ferrari at the front of the grid all those years. Last last weekend for yeah. the Williams family. They've had a success this weekend. Yeah. In um, F2. F2, yeah. Dan Tickton, the Dan junior Tickton, driver, their getting junior driver um, who's part of the Williams Academy. He won the F2 race today. So that was, at least we've had some success and for the Williams family on their last outing as uh, a Formula One team owner. George might actually get into the top uh, 13, maybe a top 10 finish if cars start falling out of order. Uh, it's, a, it's a hope. Now he can get some points. Yeah, anything can happen here. It's I, I don't think it's the engine mode here. I no. mean, they know more than what is obviously. But do you think it's the engine mode? I don't think no. it is. Raikkonen and Pitts. I, I think there's... A <laughs> Too much... Oh, lock-up from Kvyat into turn one. I think it, it's, the, it's the other settings that are still legal. Mm. Uh, one of them is wrong. Because he is actually keeping pace 
with Ricardo and Verstappen. Yeah, neither of them are losing time. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not a thing. It's just that they are under. He's underpowered compared with Sainz, Norris, and Hamilton. The Tifi's past Magnussen, by the way. Magnussen seems to have some sort of issue because he's dropped right back and he's crawling around the last corner. I mean, the Sainz is 13 behind Lewis. Uh, Norris is four behind Sainz. Magnussen stopping. Magnussen's got a failure, and this is another Ferrari engine, and he's pulled off at the side of the track. Oh, something. Uh, oh, something broke. broke. He says on the radio, Kevin Magnussen. Yeah, we've out. Got smoke coming out of uh, not the not the brake area, but actually the um, side pod at the back where the. Um, yeah, this is not going well. This might have to be at least a virtual safety car or a full safety car. They have a Marshall post there, but it looks a bit too tight to get a Formula One car into. Mm. This, the I don't think it's long enough. No, and I think also, unless they push it up to the pit lane and just keep the yellows out. Gasly's yeah. in the pit lane, he's thinking safety car. on standby now for, um, for a quick pit stop. I'm looking at the timing monitors, just waiting to see. It's perfect at the moment because if that safety car comes out, they can pit, and it's only the average time loss is 24 seconds. If the safety car comes out, it's a 20, it's a 12 second uh, gap. You lose half the time. So this will be a perfect opportunity for Hamilton to come yeah, in. Yeah, I'm just looking at Lewis. Um, Where is he? He's just coming out of Ascari. Yeah. And no sign of that safety car. Do you know what they're going to do? They're going to throw that safety car just, just as, as soon the as Lewis Safety car. Safety car. So it's to that. Lewis, get in there quick. Safety car has been deployed. It's been made official on our monitors, and now that spoils the run for the fastest ever Grand Prix here at Monza. It won't be this year. Is Lewis in? Uh, I'm looking. I'm trying to see if he disappears off the timing graphic on our monitor. Lewis, Lewis is, in. is in. And McLaren responding. Here he is, look. Lewis coming in. And we're seeing Sainz, I believe, is going to come in. Norris as well. The yeah. pit, And I think Lewis is a bit over the line there. He might get done for that. Because you have to remain on the pit lane line until you deviate to your pit box. Medium compound tyres. He's good to the end of the race. That's a 3.1 second stop. But under the safety car, that should be just fine. Carlos Sainz goes through. Sainz goes, goes, does, doesn't do it. He, he, goes, yeah. he goes round. And Sainz will take the lead of the Grand Prix, if I'm right. Has he gone out just ahead? Yes. Carlos Sainz takes the lead of the Italian Grand Prix. That could be a bad decision. And crucially, he's come over to the pit lane line because you're allowed to go full speed down that pit exit and at the, at the across the line, you're allowed then to change over. But I think they're going to pit. They haven't pit Lando either. Where is Lando Norris? I'm having a look. No, Norris isn't in the pit lane either. So, McLaren were ready, and neither of them came in. So, Carlos Sainz leads the Grand Prix and leads a lap, but it's now going to be a bit of a mistake, because that, that's a gamble well, that isn't going to pay off. Next time. They're going to be able to the that is, clearly back to the back. A, that is clearly a mistake. The drivers have disobeyed. The, cr the crew are there with both sets of tyres, right? They've disobeyed the order. So, um... Giovinazzi pits, 2.4 seconds. Quite a few cars are taken. This might be quite a lot. I'm seeing Dan. This might be a long safety car because they can't move the Haas. It's stuck uphill. They're going to have to push it up uphill to the next Oof. pit. That's the pit lane entrance as well, just where it was. It actually... You know. Oh, Michael Masi's watching on, the race director, and what is he going to do? And, well, safety car is deployed. There's the pit lane entrance. They're doing a great job. Yeah. But they're going to try and push it up to that entrance there, right, so that they can then just get it into the pits. Well, Ham well Hamilton now is going to be ruining the decision. I'm just wondering whether or not they, because of what they decided to do, did they close the pit lane? I don't know. I'm looking. Let's have a look. Have a look. Uh, instant involving Hamilton and Giovinazzi. Or do it. It's right. It's closed. You are right, Dad. You are absolutely right. The pit lane has been closed. That's why nobody else came in. Yeah. And Antonio Giovinazzi and Lewis Hamilton are under investigation for entering the pit lane when closed. So we didn't see that. Here's the confirmation on the monitor. Nothing flashed up for us that the pit lane was closed. But there is the confirmation. Hamilton and Giovinazzi under investigation entering the pit lane when closed. So Carlos Sainz leads the Grand Prix and it's going to be a very hefty drive-through penalty for Lewis Hamilton. 
again. And I don't know why Mercedes is standing there because if they, they do that for the Bottas, then they're going to be they're going to be done. Look, all the teams now standing around, and that's going to be a penalty for Hamilton and Giovinazzi. And it's suddenly Carlos Sainz, the best of the rest, stands a chance of winning the Italian Grand Prix. This is insanity. This is false, right? Clearly, the order didn't go out in time. I'm trying to have a look at lap 20. Uh, okay, here it is, look. Safety car gets deployed at 14.41. Two seconds later, pit lane entry closed, and that's when Hamilton came in. Hamilton pitted then, so the pit lane was closed. Wow. So, we didn't, we, nothing was told on to our stewards. And yet, look, everyone now saying on the Twitter, Hamilton penalty inc incoming. It might be a bit worse than that. And I'll tell you why. They're just, Dan, there's oil on the track from Magnussen. This could take a lot longer. In fact, it could be a race stoppage if they have to clear that amount up. So we'll stand by. Okay, so here's Hamilton. There's the yellow light saying safety car. Now, on the pit lane entrance, there is usually a red light telling you not to come in. Where's the light? Well, there's the safety car line. And no, no, no red no light. Red light. And is there a red light for Giovinazzi now coming in? I told you there is my game trouble because I think that's why he was deviating off off the white line. And no red light for Giovinazzi either. But there is. The pit lane was closed. So Carlos Sainz yes, and Lando Norris lead. You, you have to do the lights. Yeah, they you have might to get have away them. with this. The took both of them. The pit entry is clear. The clear in sector 17. So the safety car will remain now to clean up the oil, but the pit entry is open, and if I was Carlos Sainz, I'd dive in now, and he is. Okay, so Hamilton will stay out, but he's under investigation, will get a penalty. Lando Norris comes in, and will back up Sergio Perez, and locks up big time, coming into the pit lane. So now, this is it. Good stop for McLaren. Come on, get him out. Come on, guys. Yes! Well done, guys. Got him out brilliantly. Lando's held the pack up. Renault coming in. Carlos Sainz just took the lead. Lance Stroll has gone through, but Stroll has to pin again. Gasly, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen and Leclerc and Latifi go up the order. They are all on the alternate strategy. They're all racing out of pit edge exit now. And the new running orders, the safety cards in this lap, is Hamilton, Stroll, Gasly, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, uh, Latifi, uh, Leclerc ahead now, Latifi, and then in the net lead of the race, it's Carlos. No! In the net lead of the race, according to my mods, it's Pierre Gasly! It, Pierre Gasly effectively leads the Grand Prix! No, Hamilton must. No! Hang on. No, okay. Stroll has not pitted. Hamilton's under investigation will definitely get a penalty for that. Race control, safety car in the slap. So Hamilton entered the pit lane. Now, what I was going to say is the last time two drivers entered the pit lane while it was closed was in 2008. Felipe Massa and Giancarlo Fischer-Keller in Canada. They both got black flagged from the race. It's there in the rules. Do not enter if the pit lane is closed. Yeah, but it clearly wasn't closed. But it was. The stewards said it was. The team didn't relay it. Now, what's happened no, with Perez? Two stop. seconds. Perez got a slow stop on the front tyre. That's why he's dropped so far down the order and a very unsafe release in the path of the, the Renault, Vicardo and Bottas. So Hamilton might get a penalty here or worse, yeah, black the flag. Lane, the pit lane wasn't closed as they entered it. But it was closed, crucially. That's the decision. So according to my monitor, Stroll's got a pit again. So according to my monitor... Yeah, but the drivers aren't, aren't psychic. No, I know, I know. But they sh the team should have told them. But they're still going to get that penalty. So according to my monitor, it's Pierre Gasly who is at the effective race leader of this Grand Prix. This is insanity in Monza. So Hamilton is effect is the race leader. Stroll's yet to pit again. He's on the long run as we go green again at Monza. But it's Pierre Gasly crossing the line is in the lead of the race. Gasly, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Leclerc, Sainz and Latifi have all pitted. They are racing for position. Leclerc sends it up the inside of Giovinazzi for fourth place. Look at Carlos Sainz, wheel to wheel with Latifi. He backs out of it. McLaren rubbing their hands together because they're in a position to win win this race. Leclerc didn't get a good drive. The two Alfa Romeo side by side at the curve of, at the curve of the Grande. Down now to the Dalarosio chicane. Raikkonen and Leclerc swapping places. Raikkonen ahead of uh, Giovinazzi. Bottas ahead of Latifi. Verstappen ahead of Ocon. Perez ahead of Russell. They're all switching places now. But your net leader is Pierre Gasly who has pitted with Hamilton and Stroll under investigation. And they surely will get a penalty for that one. This is not the first time that the um, 
the people who are running this Grand Prix have wrecked it. Yeah, this is the Wakanda last year. Giving penalty to Vettel. This, is, this has been wrecked. If they give the Giovinazzi and Hamilton a penalty when they haven't put a red, fl red, red flag, you're red right, flag to stop the pit lane entrance. To stop yeah. the pit lane entrance, then that is against the rules. And if they give them the, the, the penalty, it's wrong. We're now all watching Carlos Sainz, who's in seventh place on much fresher tyres. Off goes Leclerc in a big accident. That'll be a red flag for sure. Leclerc, a massive brake failure coming through the and slides into the barrier. The safety car is out. That will immediately be a red flag. But remember, it looks big, but the halo is there to protect the driver. So Leclerc might be unconscious, but that is a big off, and that will be a red flag for sure. And also, that is the second He's red okay. failure for a Ferrari. Hearts pounding, but he's okay. Charles Leclerc, a miracle of the halo being there. He's able to get out of the car. He is taking the wheel off. He's a bit shaken, but he's okay. That on the player on the radio. Yeah, was a big crash. Ah. I think he's had a brake failure and has had some suspension problem as well. He went launching into the barrier, and that's at the power bollocker. Derek Warwick crashed there in 1990 and absolutely destroyed his Lola. And that the tyres are damaged, Dad. The car's going to be neater there. That's going to be a red flag. Let's take a look. Coming through the parabolica. I'm having a look at the front suspension because I think that's what fails. Oh, no, we just get some oversteer. And, oh, that's a heavy hit. That is a very heavy hit. I'm a... a look, that's, that's identical to Derek Warwick in 1990. That was... Um, um, if you look, the back end um, loses grip and then regains grip, yeah. straightening the car... And he, he just has no chance of correcting it. Look, can you see? Yep, and bang, little flip. And it's a, it was at a part of the track that just could not be avoided. This is it again, look. As you say, gets that little flick, gets on the AstroTurf, that keep, that's got no traction, and bang into the wall. The tyre damage, the tyre uh, barrier is damaged. They'll have to stop the race to return that. And Leclerc, with so much energy, is running away from the accident. He's running away from the Tavosi. It's a stop! for Antonio Giovinazzi for pitting under a safety car with the pit lane closed and that will be the same to Lewis Hamilton. It's a stop-go penalty of 10 seconds and that will also be for Hamilton for sure, Dad. Hamilton went in first and so we, we still have that thing about the light. May, the, yeah, maybe. You know, Hamilton was under investigation first. There's clearly possibly mitigating circumstances with Lewis. Yeah, because I don't think the safety car was the safety car was called. Then he came in just before they closed the pit lane entrance. But a lot of Hamilton. Are we gonna get a I believe we will get a penalty. Okay, got so Bono says he... So, Lewis on the radio, are we going to get a penalty? Bono saying, I believe we will get a penalty. And we've got a red flag. We have a red flag. The 2020 Italian Grand Prix has been stopped on lap 26 of 53. It becomes the first race since the 2017 Azerbaijan Grand Prix to be stopped. And I think, Dad, the only course of action to repair that tyre barrier is to stop the race. And we lose the chance of the fastest ever Grand Prix, but we'll leave. Yeah. At least we've got a lad that has had a heavy crash running away. That's the, that's the beauty of the new safety things like the halo. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. As I'm just messaging Megan, who isn't here in the commentary box this weekend, to say red flag. So this is Hamilton coming in, and as you can see, look, no sign of it. Let's listen. There's a light on when I came in. Uh, we believe there was a light panel on the very left-hand side of turn 11. Okay, but the actual pit lane entry, there's no light. So Lewis saying exactly what you were saying, Dad. Yeah, yeah. No, way, no light at the pit lane entry. But crucially, the pit exit is it under that. So the red flag is out, the session has been stopped. And they're the stewards, Gary Connolly uh, as well, the head steward. Tom Christensen is the driver's steward this weekend. So the race has been stopped on lap 26 of 53. And that's all because the tyre barriers need repairing and Leclerc's car is so buried into it. Four races at Monza have been red flagged. The most recent was 1995. And the last time a race was stopped in Formula 1 was the 2017 Azerbaijan Grand Prix. The cars will now form into the pit lane behind the safety car in 
in a staggered formation and your effective race leader is Lewis Hamilton but surely he will get a penalty. So you've chosen the right one to come into the commentary box. Yeah but I agree with Lewis yeah. completely and uh, if I was Giovinazzi I would be um, appealing as well because there was no light when either of them went in no. on the pit lane. Megan, seriously, for the first time in three years, yes, Megan, the red flag is out. The race has been neutralised. And they're all coming into the pit lane then. So, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wish, I'm starting for A, to be glad that this race is a highlight form, not a live race, because we'd have to do a serious amount of filling. We still will, but uh, not as much as we would do if the race was live next weekend. But that's both Ferraris out of the Grand Prix, both with pretty similar Whoa! failures. That nearly killed that um, Marshall. Marshall. That flip up of that car. Of Leclerc. It, it came within inches of his head. Yep, they pulled it out of the barrier and the, the tractor was a bit unbalanced and it, it just flicked up once again and nearly killed three or four marshals. So, well, once again, very lucky. Let's take another look at Leclerc's accident with the hindsight that the race has been stopped. Comes into the parabolica, gets the oversteer, gets on the astroturf and that's what does it. There's no grip out there. And then the gravel trap takes over and you're in the wall. Simple. So, race stopped. And that's a, it's a big old whack. I think what surprised us all is how deep the car went in. It was at full speed as well. Yeah, it did. And we remember a certain person yeah. going in so far. Was it, was it Hulkenberg? Uh, Hulkenberg did it last year as well. And yeah, I remember that. Would they had to dig him out. Or, and yeah, Bertie. Fish, Bertie. Bertie, they had Fisher to dig him Keller. out. Fisher Keller. Keller did it as well, yeah. They've all buried themselves in those tyre things. It's so much so. Time, the, look at that. The front tyre that's come off is on fire. It's still so hot. And yeah, they still put loads of fire extinguishing on it, but it's not doing anything. So they've ro they're rolling into the gravel trap. Dig it, get some gravel on it. Just dig it into the gra gravel. Just put it onto the flat onto the gravel the other way. Oh, now they've put it onto the tarmac. The stupidest thing is now it's going to burn the tarmac to bits. Get it onto the gravel. So now, also a reminder that under the red flag procedure, we can change tyres. So this helps Lance Stroll, remember, who hadn't stopped yet. So Stroll, who hadn't stopped, has been saved by this red flag. He can now take his new tyres, go to the end of the race. So effectively, instead of Gasly becoming our net leader and Sainz, Lance Stroll becomes the race leader. What I think about the, um, the, the race control, yeah. Hang on, stop and go penalty for Lewis. Lewis Hamilton, a 10 second stop go penalty to be served when the race is restarted. And that is just another killer because he's going to drop right to the back. And that has just turned off millions and millions of people for right around the world. I'll tell you what it also does. It provides us with the battle for the midfield between the McLarens and the racing points. I think this is so wrong. Entering the pit lane when it's closed is the reason for Hamilton's penalty. So, Gasly, so, so Giovinazzi so and Hamilton. These, like, because they failed themselves, the admin, admin, right, both of them lads have got a ruined race. Yeah. That is ridiculous. But remember what we saw with Theo Porcher this morning in the Formula 3 race. He went off the track and able to climb back up to third place. Oh, it's I know, over. Lewis. If anyone can do it, it would be, it would be Lewis, but, you know... Let's take a look at it once again on board. So he comes in round the power bar. The safety car's already out. That's the reason. So the safety car's out, and there again. Now usually if the pit lane's closed, there's a big red. It's a safety car there, and it's a yellow flag being yeah, raised. Not a red. Not a red. Now the red flag, if it's if the pit lane is closed, is just is inside the pit lane itself to stop the cars coming in. And I don't know how Mercedes missed that. I really don't. Because, but it, it was closed a bit too quickly. But the race has been started. I didn't see. I, 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 that's the third time I've seen it, and I haven't. I, I did not see, and neither did Lewis. The red. No. Instant involving car. Oh, oh, hello. McLaren have got another one. Instant involving car four Norris under investigation, driving unnecessarily slowly when entering pit lane. I did say he was backing up the pack. So even Lando Norris is under investigation now. If you're a Brit, you may as well just turn off because the race day isn't going your way, is it? No, this is Italy. You know, yeah. They don't like us. I'll tell you what, though. Stroll could be on for his first ever Grand Prix victory. And I'll tell you what, the two Alphas are going well. And there's the confirmation for Lando Norris under investigation, as I just told you, for driving unnecessarily slowly when entering the pit lane. So this is our first red flag. 
in the Liberty Media era, era and it's the first red flag since 2017. It's also a an admin error. Yeah. That if I was yeah. Lewis, I would be... There he goes. He's off to the stewards. I bet he's off to the stewards to say, look, there was nothing. What could my life supposed to do? Well, I'd just like to point out as well that Ted Kravitz is in the grandstand, but under a red flag procedure, he's allowed back into the paddock. So Ted will definitely be going to find out what's happening. Lewis, on his scooter, is running... Well, not scooter, well, what does he say? Rolling down the pit lane in the opposite direction, and the race control building is just behind... Well, where is race control, actually? Race control is just after the Mercedes garage, actually, according to the monitor, according to our little paper we've got stuck up in the box. So Hamilton can now run back and have the conversation. But uh, he's now in the fast lane as well, which you are allowed to do under the red flag procedure. Every, the whole procedure becomes different now under, this, under a race stoppage. Large stroll there. This is where they have to appeal it to yeah, them to quickly. Them right now. Because it's unfair. It is unfair. Right? They have made an admin error. Yeah. They didn't press the button to close that pit lane as it is required to do so. They have just it's just come up on the screens. That isn't enough. Mm. The drivers don't have the, the screens. Yeah. They don't have them. They only get told. All they have is what comes up on their dashboard. Which is usually a yellow flag, safety car, red flag. No messages from race control come up there at all. That all goes through the team. And the team clearly haven't said anything back to Lewis. In fact, they called him even more. Now, this is why Lando Norris is under investigation. I mean, the 10 second... You know... Two seconds. This is why Lando Norris is under investigation. Coming into the pit lane, and he slows to 80 kilometres an hour... And now he backs up. I don't think he does, actually. No, they, they, they. If the safety car was out. I think I think that's pretty consistent. It just looked like he did because he had to stamp on the brakes so much yeah. coming into the pit lane. But he was at constant speed. He was at constant speed. If the if, look Ferrari are out. Yeah, for both Ferrari out of their home race. Let's see it from Sergio Perez's point of view. So Perez goes up. Perez speeds up and locks up himself coming to the spit. Look. It's on full there, so Perez is at the speed limiter. And if anything, I'd be investigating Perez. But yeah, go on. Both Ferraris are out of the Grand Prix. Both Ferraris are out. Um, this this will be massive. Yes. The 10 second penalty will put Lewis at the back. So, Italy's best hopes now come from Gasly with Alfa Ture and Alfa Romeo for from fifth. Then if you all you can do to get a Grand, Grand Prix win is cheat. Yeah. Well... Well, to be fair, the pit lane was closed, Hamilton's been done for it, but the, the pit lane, it's a matter of fact, the pit lane was definitely closed, the stewards sent out the message It's also it. a matter of fact, they, they didn't, didn't follow procedure. Yeah, they didn't follow it quickly Both enough. those drivers yeah. should have this rescinded. Um, it's unsure, maybe not, maybe not Giovinazzi, because he was definitely came in. And there's the winner of the F2 race, if the medical one, car. Sorry, the medical car. Coming in. That's a great picture. Yeah. Of the I've seen uh, it now. second and third place, and in the middle the medical is the car. medical car in front of the one. I have seen that now, by the way. Because uh, Dan Ticton, uh, his car failed, and the deck closed down lap. Yeah. And he got wheeled back. So, no idea how long this red flag is going to take. We, uh, by the way, for those of you who are on your counters, uh, the race started at 10 past the hour. It's now three minutes past the hour, and the race is definitely not going to be completed by uh, 3.20 UK time, so we've lost the opportunity to have the fastest of the race. Even though the clock has stopped, the race, uh, the timer continues. We now have two hours to complete this race, but now in a four-hour window. So four hours to complete the race, under its two hours. So the two-hour clock has stopped, but the four-hour clock has now started to get to get that in. So this race can now no longer last more than four hours, including the red flag. Just for you, so you know. But look, they are debating. Look on the Mercedes pit wall. Hamilton, Toto, Bono, uh, as well. James Allison's there. And Dad, this is a perfect opportunity now. Look, there's Joe Bauer, the technical delegate, because. Mercedes want to repair Bottas's car after his error at the start. Yeah. And the technical dele delegates 
uh, giving the okay and and making notes of it. That that's good. Because clearly Mercedes now feel that uh, yeah. Bottas is their best hope at winning this Grand Prix because the FIA. Um, yeah, the FIA have just sort of ruined this race for everybody. They've handled this a bit poorly, I must admit. The pit lane was closed. closed. We didn't get told. Nobody got told. I guessed it. Yeah, you guessed the pit lane was closed. I checked and it was closed, but nothing popped up on our Nobody monitors. Nothing popped up on the monitors. No, no yeah. sign of it at the entrance to the pit lane. And all of a sudden the pit lane was closed and the stewards forgot to tell people. So it's, a, it's another one of those factors that we just have to wait and see what's going to happen. Look at that Ferrari. Absolutely destroyed. That is a miracle as the halo for Charles Leclerc. Second time in his career as well he's had a miracle with the halo. Alonso flying over the top of him in Belgium 2018 and then now here at Monza stops the tyre by Camille. Because as, as you said, I remember Luciano Berti having a big accident quite similar to Leclerc. And, and guess where Lewis is? Lewis has gone to the stewards. <coughs> yeah, Lewis has gone to the stewards to protest his decision. Uh, turn one incident involving Carl 11 Perez and 33 Verstappen notice, and that could be under investigation as well. I'll tell you what, I, 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 I'm just going to say something to you, you, to, you, you, to you here. The red flag is out to repair the time barrier, to the, to the time barrier, but how long are we going to be under the red flag while they, while they sort out the running order? Yeah, Tom Christensen is the uh, driver steward this weekend. From Le Mans, yeah. And um, whenever Tom has been the uh, driver steward, he always seems to have a lot to do. Oh, I bet tell you what, Johnny Herbert had a weekend last weekend, didn't he? He chose the right quiet. one. Yeah. yeah, this weekend, however, we've got this with the left and right. There is accidents. one thing that Tom Christensen is a Le Mans champion multi-times. Yeah, nine, and, nine times. And he's not just a driver steward, he's a world champion. And he understands things better than um, most. And, uh, you know... Toto's talking to... Toto's uh, talking to... Uh, Bartas. Baltry. Interesting that Bartas has decided to stay in the car. Oh, here's Lewis. We're following Lewis now. He's coming into the driver steward's room. Or is he just coming out of it? In fact, this is near the commentary box area as well, actually. Is this Lewis going to the stewards or coming away from the stewards? He's not happy, look, whatever it is. Oh, understandably he's not happy, but uh, we're following him. The clock has, uh, by the way, stopped now. So they're in for a lengthy delay. I think this is him coming out. So he's been to the stewards, Dad, and he's, he's had his decision. He's protested it. And let's see what happens from now. Because they can rescind it, of course. Eat quite easily. Well, I think they should because it was, he's clearly got a point, and so is Giovinazzi. Yeah, he's at the back of the he's at, he's at the back of the Red Bull setup now. But yeah, don't think I don't think it's quite easy with Giovinazzi because the safety. The problem is that sorry, the safety car came out, and then within ten seconds, Hamilton came into the pit lane. Doing an awful lot of work on both of the yeah both of them. They're changing the setups, aren't they? Uh, but yeah, the safety car came out within 10 seconds. Where's Lewis going now? And Lewis going to his pit lane. Lewis going to his room in the setting up. So yeah, just quickly, Hamilton. Say, so safety car gets called. Then we get Hamilton coming in within 10 seconds. But the pit lane was already closed. But it was too quick to get the message across. Giovinazzi came in the lap later when the pit lane was definitely closed and the message was on the screen and they would be hearing it all. So yeah. It would be interesting situation. Was that you? No, I'm just checking you. It was, but yeah. So there's Ferrari getting their pit lane out at the moment. Oh, there's a box falling over outside our commentary box. That's what we're just checking. So the red flag's out. Ferrari get their uh, cars back, and we now go into a situation where we just wait. What's that? Yeah. So the question is, I see this is a good situation for. Hamilton to appeal, but there's definitely no point in Giovinazzi appealing because the, that was definitely a lap later. That's why I think his penalty came up first before Lewis's. So you've um, got the FIA changing the engine modes to try and <laughs> stop Mercedes winning. The session will restart at 16:20. That's 3:20 UK times. So that's 10 minutes away. Um, and yeah. now we've got um, a dubious. Oh, yeah, go on. I've just remembered something. Go a on. dubious decision by the stewards regarding a Mercedes of the world champion. 
I've just remembered something that might be a bit interesting as we get confirmation from the uh, race control of the session we start at 6 and 20. Here's an interesting thing for you. Now, when the red flag comes out, there is an option for the race director to restart the race with the five light procedure. A bit like the old days. We haven't had that. We haven't had a reason because it only came in 2019. Let's go over to Karun Chanhok now. It's Hamilton and he's coming through the parabolica. Now look to the left hand side. We're going to try and zoom in to the panel board there showing an X. Now as Martin said, it's a little bit hard to see because it is out of his eye line, especially if the team have told him to box, which they did. I was listening to the team radio. They definitely said box, box, safety car. But that is still a place where Lewis should be able to see it. And what's important is there's a second panel here on the left-hand side that he can also clearly see. So by this stage, he should have been able to see those. There isn't a sign or a light here, but that's not required because you've passed two of the panels clearly telling you the pit lane entry is closed. So you can understand fully why he's got a penalty. I do believe, by the way, guys, that they're allowed to change tires to a different compound. Roman Grosjean, I think, benefited from it in Australia in 2016, I believe. So, yeah, Stroll should have a free stop here. Thank you. Thank you to Karun. Your mic was still on there, Dad. You can tell it. Uh, I don't agree yeah, with that. What, well, from what Karun just said? Yeah, I don't agree with that because those lights, it's about, it's about the race yeah. track, not the pit lane. Okay, so when resuming a race, <coughs> when resuming a race, the delay will be kept as short as possible as well, but signals will be shown for the 10 minute, 5 minute, 3 minute, 1 minute, 15 seconds before the resumption as well. However, the race will be resumed behind the safety car when the green lights are illuminated, but all cars are not yet in line behind the safety car, but when the race actually restarts, now here's the thing, when the clerk of the course decides it's safe to call the safety car in, a message saying standing start will be sent to all teams via the official messaging system. So it will be SS. So, but unless they do several laps in wet conditions, it will be a rolling start. But this is dry conditions, so we should have a standing start procedure. Article 42.8 of the sporting regulations. So, it should be a standing start after one lap behind the safety car, which I think is what's going to happen. I think Lewis is going to accuse them of cheating. Yeah, I think that's what they've done. This is all for the show, I think he's going to say. Okay, so if after several laps behind the safety car, track conditions are considered on Salter Bob to start the race from a standing start, the message rolling start will be sent to all teams via the message, and then we'll go green at the end of the lap. But according to this, as well, due to the stewards, and this was only updated a couple of days ago, I'm having a look. Yep, this is going to be a whole new start procedure. So this, now, okay, here's what's going to happen. Article 42.8 of the stewards regulations dictate that when the safety car comes in, the race will restart behind the safety car. After one lap, there will be a standing start, so the cars will line up in two by two formation, the five light procedure will come on, and will go again. But, it's a race control issue, that's the thing. So they can determine the standing start, but I think we're going to have a, a, a five light procedure go. The, now, unlike the old days, when we restarted races with the five lights, it would not be a two-half race determined by the aggregate timing. This will all run as one race. So we are on like 27 and 53. It will not restart to have 32 laps to go or whatever. This will be the 53-lap race with a second start, presumably lap 28. Because we're on lap 27 now. We'll go around, complete that. Lights on, away we go. So this could be an interesting one. I'm getting all excited now. Another five light procedure. That'll be an interesting one. I've lost all all interest in it. Yeah. Because they've ruined it. Well, the question is, when ham when's Hamilton? It's not been it's yeah. not been being silly silly because of the thing. It's uh, this this is supposed to, whoever wins this race will feel that they've done it because of the fact the penalty yeah of the penalty to Lewis. Are they going... Chuck is clear, by the way. Let's hear from Mike. Um, with Lewis, he's going to be coming through. He's going to be angry. He's going to be excited. And I think it'll be easier. In the correct order. And then we have... Absolutely. Let's just have a... Oh, fantastic! It's just been announced and I'm buzzing. They're doing it. They're actually doing it. For the first time since the 2001 Belgium Grand Prix, when the race restarts after a red flag, we are going to have another five-life 
procedure. Calm down. Oh, I'm buzzing because, of course, it, just to uh, just to rectify, 2003 we had a red flag in Bel in uh, in Brazil, but the race got called after 75 percent distance. Then the the rule was brought in to restart the race behind the safety car in 2005. We didn't have a red flag until 2007, and that was a wet race. And after ever since then, we've had. A standing, st we had a rolling start restart behind the safety car. This is the first time. Oh, there we have a replay. replay. This is going to be the first time since the 2001 Belgium Grand Prix, after Bertie crashed in similar circumstances to Leclerc, that they're all going to roll up on the grid again. We're going to have five red lights and we're going to go again. And then Lewis will hire and Giovinazzi will have to go in and do their 10 second penalty. Yes, the track is clear. Absolute the race is starting. stupidity. Five minutes to go until the restart. So effectively, this. It, are they going to put Stroll onto pole position from Gasly? Oh, this is going to be another one. Another race start procedure. We're going to get it all over again, folks. And this is what we're excited for. A second start to the Grand Prix. There was a rumour that they weren't going to do this after every time a safety car came in, but it quickly got dropped because we had five safety cars in a row. The clutches will be burnt out. So the late, great Charlie Writing decided to make it after a red flag. We would have a standing start again. Oh, this is, this is buzzing. This is brilliant. I'm so looking forward to this. The last commentator in the UK to call a, st a red flag restart was Murray Walker in, in, in Belgium 2001. So you and Crofty are going to be okay? And Crofty, ben? ben, Alex, Jack, all of them. This is it. Oh, this is going to be fun. It's annoying that this isn't it's the rule as well. It's annoying when it gets exciting. Yeah, you know, this is going to be fun. I mean, it's a question is, what do I say when the lights go out? Can't exactly say action at Monza, can I? Because we've already had that. Is it go again? Is it part two? What do I do? Is it let's get on with the cheat Grand Prix? <laughs> I don't know. All I do know is that this is a perfect opportunity for me to have something a little bit different to All say. I know is the FIA have done this thinking that this will get an audience and it won't. It won't improve. It, people will no. be turning off in their droves because I remember a situation when uh, Rossi went out in the Italian Grand Prix. Oh yeah, I and remember. And 32,000 people left the circuit. He had that engine failure a couple of you years know, ago. Well, we haven't got anybody there now. But we've got an awful lot of people at home. I think I think this Formula One will rue this decision. The only people in for half the people in the UK what are waiting for Channel 4 later. Let's have a look. And how soon do I have to take this penalty? Oh, it is happening. Uh, we will be taking it straight away. Uh, we'll do it within two laps. So it is happening. Hamilton is going to take the penalty. Yeah, and Lewis sounds very angry. So it is decided. Very depressed he about does. it as well. He does, and I think that's a, that's the harshest penalty I've seen. Okay, race control have just said no further action with the Lando Norris incident, and so Norris will start seventh again. No radio communications on roll around lap to the grid, so it is going to be a standing start procedure. I can't wait for this one. Okay, oh, you've picked a great race to come into the commentary box with, with Megan not no, being here. No, I'm, I'm fed up and bored now because this is yeah, but we've got a, a travesty. Yeah, but we've got a lot to talk about, haven't we? Well, I hope Lewis wins. <coughs> Likelihood? I, as we saw, well, we, we saw it this morning with um, would you be Porcher. Would you just be disappointed if Lando to Norris... To get a podium. Would you be disappointed if Lando Norris goes through? No, I won't. Precisely. But I would... I, I think this is disgusting. I, I, they've made the mistake and punished the two drivers. So we're going to get it all over again. And I think they've only done punish the second driver. Because of Lewis. Yeah. They're really punished. They're really yeah. punished him to keep consistency. Yeah, it's going to be debated long into the night. This, but we've got how many laps I to go? Will, Your quickness. Um, how many laps to go? Well, 27 laps to go out of 53. No, no, that's completed. How many laps to go? 53 minus 28. Because we'll do one to the grid. <laughs> I can't do. Well, I can't wear that out that quickly. Do I have a calculator? Yeah, but I'm thinking about all those de okay, de decision rather things. Yeah, let me just get this 57 minus the 28 laps that will be completed. We'll have 25 laps of racing coming Oops, our way. Yes. Hamilton. Yeah, we're not going to be getting that gap anyway uh, in two laps. Uh, I think we're just going to have to suck it up and just get on with the, uh, the task in hand. In two laps, I can get at least a five second gap. Uh, I know, so you'll still be in free air when you stop. I, I completely understand. Trust me on this one. Uh, if another safety car comes out, so I need to get this stop. Yeah, you 
That was Bono and James Allison on the radio, so they're clearly not happy with it, are they? 25 laps to go. They're thinking another safety car. Both Ferraris out of this Grand Prix. Liberty are thinking the, the Concord Agreement has been signed. Who right? can walk away? It's the FIA, not Liberty. walk away. Yeah. Right. The FIA, the FIA are um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely destroying yeah. this race. So... Here we go again then, folks. After around about 40 minute delay, the race is about to restart in a new procedure as the safety car pulls away on what effectively becomes a formation lap. To explain this, Article 42.8 of the Sporting Regulations, when the clerk of the course uh, decides that the, the safety car will come in, it will be a standing start to resume a red flag race. The cars will now head out on lap 27 and 53. They will form up on the grid in the staggered 2x2 formation. The five red lights will come on and the race will restart officially. This is all to, as a way to get the fans interested after si uh, four safety car starts in 2016. I'll Charlie, tell you how you get the fans interested. Don't make stupid yes. penalties up. Lewis Hamilton has a 10 second penalty for entering the pit lane uh, when it was closed, as does Antonio Giovinazzi. But here is the grid then for the race resumption. As the safety car leads them around, the race is officially restarted, but we will have a new start. So here's the grid then. It's Lewis Hamilton on pole position once again. Alongside him is Lance Stroll in the front row, exactly the same as 2017 of the front row. Pierre Gasly is on row two alongside Kimi Raikkonen. The third row sees Antonio Giovinazzi alongside Carlos Sainz. Row four, Lando Norris and Valtteri Bottas. The fifth row sees Nicholas Latifi inside the top ten alongside Daniel Ricciardo. Row six sees Row 6 sees Max Verstappen and Esteban Ocon. Row 7, Danny Kvyat and uh, Sergio Perez. Row 8, row eight Russell and Albon. Row 9, Grosjean. Out of the race, not taking the restart. Leclerc, Magnussen and Vettel. The safety car will enter the pits. It is a standing start procedure once again for the Italian Grand Prix. And I've turned my headphones down so that Dad doesn't get an earache when we restart this race. It's going to be an interesting one because now Lance Stroll effectively becomes the leader of this Grand Prix followed by Gasly, Raikkonen and Giovinazzi. I'll say this, unless Bottas has got something great we're going to see a different team winner and in the form of Racing Point their first ever win could come their way today. This is clearly designed so that Britain don't get a clean sweep yeah. at the Italian Grand Prix. So well we won this F2, morning. F2, F3 already done F1 it's not going to go it's Britain's now way. in the hands of Lewis being a miracle worker. Yeah, I tell you what. Keep or Lando or Alex. Keep your eye. The race. Keep your eye on Lando Norris. Start seventh. They've all changed tyres as well. Hamilton's on the hards. Mediums for Stroll, Gasly. Changed Soft. half the car. St uh, yep, yeah. softs for Raikkonen and Giovinazzi. Everyone else on mediums. Bar. Ocon and then hard tyres for uh, hard tyres for Albon and Grosjean. So it is lap 27 to 53. It's now just started lap 28 of this Grand Prix. The cars will line up on the grid. <coughs> We've never seen this before in Formula One. We're going to have a restart to the race in the middle of the race with the five lights coming on. It is lap 28 to 53. We do it all the time in MotoGP, don't we? <coughs> yes, but they've got the old Formula One aggregate system. This is the first time it's ever happened in Formula One that in the middle of a race we're going to stop and start again and it's going to be the same race. Strap yourselves in. Oh, Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen are now under investigation for a turn one incident just before the red flag. So, 25 laps to go at the Italian Grand Prix. A red flag has been out for 40 minutes. It's lap 28 to 53. Let's get the five red lights on again and we will restart the Grand Prix for real. And away we go. Good start from Hamilton. Stroll gets a good getaway. Look at look, look at Gasly. Immediately having to defend from Raikkonen. Stroll's got a bad start. Gasly to second. Lightning reactions from Carlos Sainz to avoid Lance Stroll into turn one. Gasly takes over second place. He effectively is the leader. Kimi Raikkonen bats 
wrestling with Lance Stroll. Giovinazzi cuts him off as they come out to the Retofilio. Round the Coda Grande one more time. Stroll has the inside line, but he becomes Giovinazzi on the inside line. Kimi Raikkonen going for glory. A big lock up and nearly taking out Raikkonen. Goes Lance Stroll into the Dalla Rosia chicane. And he comes back on just behind uh, Antonio Giovinazzi. Carlos Sainz to be grinning with that. As it, he's going to go to the inside. Stroll defends. And Sainz gets through into the second Lesmo. Watch out for Lando Norris just behind him. What a great restart to the Grand Prix. Lando looking one way, looking the other. Three laps, of course, until the DRS is open. Lewis is going for it to try and get the gap. Stroll goes around the outside of Carlos Sainz and does a fantastic move into the Ascari. Down the back straightaway towards the Parabolica for the first time in this restarted race. Hamilton goes the way, but it's Gasly, your race leader, from Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Stroll, and I never thought I'd be saying that. I've got a feeling, you know, if, if, if Lewis can get a, get a... He's in! He's in now! Lewis is in now! Gasly leads from Raikkonen! As count it with me, folks! Ten seconds will be the gap! It's in your pit box now! Look at Stroll having to defend as Sainz sails round the outside and gets the move into the Retifilio. Bottas was looking at the back of Norris but couldn't do anything and away goes Hamilton! Well, Lewis has got it all to do now, and if anybody can do it with um, all these laps to go... 24. Maybe impressive. He's 17th, though. Exactly where Theo Porcher was when he restarted. One safety car is back in it. The two Renaults side by side into the Della Rosia, and that's Ricardo ahead of Ocon now. It's amazing when, you, when, you, when you're angry, you can't do maths. No, I know. It's really annoying, isn't I it? I am really angry at this. Yeah, I think everybody Come is. Come on, Lewis. He's 29 seconds and behind Perez Albon. And Ver Verstappen might get a similar thing. Yeah, because I think they had other fast runners. So this is effectively Alfa Torre leading the race from the Alfa Romeos. And this is insanity. If Alfa Romeo win this race, I will be gobsmacked. I will be absolutely gobsmacked. But I tell you what, the Italians have switched back on. They've got the, they've got two different teams in the top three, with Alfa Torre leading the way from Alfa Romeo. And we knew at some point in the name change would get confused. We've got Alfa, one, two, three. What a ridiculous situation. Cars that should be at the back because they're not fast enough oh, and now are leading the Grand Prix. Is that a Grand Prix? Let's have a this. It's a 23 second gap to the pack. Lewis isn't happy, Dad. He can clearly tell on the radio. I'm not happy. Don't know about Lewis. I'm not happy. No, I tell you what, though. For the fans, though, this is a great race if you're watching on television. No, it's not. It's been yes, neutralised you... by the FIA. Yes, but if you're me, who's got no interest in any of them, no. and just doing it from an outsider point of view, this is a barnstorm Italy after Belgium, which didn't really deliver. So we've got... Ga I never thought I'd say this in my life. Gasly leads from Raikkonen, Giovinazzi. Then we get Sainz, Stroll, Norris, Bottas, Ricardo, Ocon and Kvyat. The closest Mercedes challenger is seventh. And I tell you what, Lewis is outside the points. Verstappen is also outside the points. Bottas is seventh. He's going to be closing in on points. But it looks like a day where none of the top three in the championship are going to improve. This is crazy. I'll tell you what, the battle between McLaren and Racing Point's getting close. Race control, no further action between Perez and Verstappen in turn one. So the race goes on with now penalty free. Correct me if I'm wrong, has Giovinazzi served his 10 second penalty? No, he hasn't. Yes. He's coming in now. I just thought that. And here comes Giovinazzi to serve his 10 second penalty. A part of me was hoping that he had, but he's now coming in to serve it. So that now promotes Carlos Sainz up into third place, uh, with Stroll fourth and Norris into fifth place. So the top, th the top five are Alfa Torre, Alfa Romeo, McLaren, Racing Point, McLaren. That's insane! I tell you what though, it shows that the racing point can't exactly be that similar to last year's Mercedes because it's not getting up there. And oh, and that's, uh, that's Verstappen! Verstappen in the pit lane and he's out! Verstappen retires from the Grand Prix! And that is a shocker! Wow, what else can we get in this Italian Grand Prix? Leclerc, Magnussen and Vettel out! And now we get Verstappen out just after the restart! Well... 
I don't know what to say to that one, but this Grand Prix, you said, Dad, it would be interesting. You said it would be a power unit issue. It will take six laps for Lewis to get up to Albon. And I don't think that's going to happen either. Red Bull are out. So that's Verstappen out. So it's now all lying on Bottas to close in on the championship hunt for this uh, 2020 season. 28 seconds to, Gan uh, to Gasly, the race leader. But Albon, as you say, has got 13 seconds to, uh, to Albon. But 28 to Gasly. All of a sudden, Bottas's car seems to be working right. They changed it on the they changed it under the red flag procedure as well. Joe Bowers all over the back of it, making sure. But look at the lead Gasly has. Two seconds to Raikkonen. Sides is my hot tip to win this race, though. He's going like a man on a mission. Been constantly quick all weekend. and was quicker than Bottas in the third practice session. The McLaren looking good, but Bottas right on the back of the other McLaren of Lando Norris. I think Norris is I think Norris is playing the train game. Just backing everyone up a little bit to give Sainz his teammates some breathing room. Hamilton, the fastest lap of the race now, 123.464. Uh, as Giovinazzi now come up behind him, and Verstappen is definitely out of the race. So we're all go here as Bottas kicks up the dust. 14 seconds the gap between Ham Hamilton and Albon now. I don't think Lewis is going to get any the points today. I really don't. No, I do. He's quick. He, 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 you know. He, the, the, yeah. the biggest well, there is, look. would have been Verstappen. There he is on the monitor. He's, he, he, and Hamilton's Perez, coming through. And he's only got Perez yeah. to get past. Hamilton's coming through Della Rosa, in, yeah? In about 10 laps time. Yeah, he's, he's closing in, but it would be impressive if one of these top five doesn't end up the winner of this Grand Prix. Add Bottas to the mix, yes, but I think everyone would be a bit annoyed if Bottas took the race win, to be fair, because this is shaping up to be a, a day of the underdogs. Uh, in terms of the top dogs always winning here at Monza. I think half of Italy want either Gasly or Raikkonen to win. Mainly Raikkonen though, he's a favourite here in Italy. Ex-Ferrari driver. Once you're a Ferrari driver, you're always a Ferrari driver, is what Nigel Mansell said. And this is going to be a real interesting one. Bottas still pulling out the toe though, Dad. So his, his engine cooling that was an issue yeah. in the first part of the race, before the red flag, is still an issue. Let's look at... Um, oh, hang on. George Russell pulling to the outside. This is to get past Roman Grosjean for 12th place. Go on, George. Oh, he's cut off at the Retifilio and lets um, Grosjean go back through. That was an all right one, I suppose. Lewis has, Lewis has got the fastest lap. 122.901. Here comes Russell again, though. He's right there in the toe. Pulls to the outside. Breaks very early. I think that's to try and get a better exit out of Dalla Roggia towards the two Lesmos. Until Lewis catches Albon, we're not going to see much. No, we're not. For Lewis. Lewis is just in the. It, Lewis next is so few, far back. Next few laps um, are in. It, it just an irrelevant. He's 10 seconds behind Albon now, according to my monitor. Look, 10 seconds yeah, now. Yeah, he's just correct up four seconds. In that last lap. In that last lap. And there was a replay of Russell going a bit off the track because he's trying to get past George Russell. So, all oh, the way around. This is where we miss, miss, miss Megan with her. <laughs> Timing monitor, yeah. the timing monitor. Oh, Megan's picked a right one to miss this weekend. She's back next weekend when we're live. And Raikkonen going all four wheels off the track at uh, the Parabolica. And that's now going to give the instance to Sainz. Be, be patient with Raikkonen. You can be patient. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Look at this. Sainz pulls to the outside to try and get past Raikkonen. Into the Retifilio we go. It's side by side. It's a beautiful move that's from Carlos Sainz. That's really patient, isn't it? Yeah, really patient. Look at McLaren, they know it! McLaren know they could be on for a victory today! And as, a, as personally, I'm so willing them on. This is going to give McLaren win this race. England will erupt for two different reasons. One, the Lewis penalty. Two, the fact that McLaren are winners again. Let's take another look at this great move. Carlos is a nice lad and he's driving a British car, so hopefully... <laughs> if he wins it, if, Italy. If, if, if anybody doesn't win it, if Lewis doesn't win it... Um, the only Ferrari... I want a Brit to win. A future, a, Brit car. a future Ferrari driver getting past a past Ferrari driver. I'll tell you what, if he does win this Grand Prix, he's Carlos Sainz... it. Yeah, was it? Yeah. He's past it. If if Sainz does win this Grand Prix... I don't think he is actually past it. If Sainz does win this Grand Prix, he's cemented in the hearts of the Tifosi because he's a Ferrari driver. Contract isn't confirmed. Oh, is that the near... Is that what all this is about? <laughs> is that what they've all... You know, did they yeah. work out that a f future... F next year's yeah. Ferrari driver could win this race if they give certain people penalties? <coughs> 
How low have the FIA and Italy gone? I don't think that's it, but I tell you what, it would be nice and I so I bet far. there's a lot of people in Italy don't like this situation. Look at Stroll though, he's in the DRS to Raikkonen, coming down towards the Retafilio. If we pulled to the wrong angle to see if he's going to make a move, no he didn't, just backs out of it, but he's getting awfully close. Raikkonen's going to start sinking like a stone, Norris doing a brilliant job holding up Bottas, and I, th I think, Dad, with the amount of laps to go, it's going to be a two-horse fight between Gasly and Sainz, unless Stroll can get through. He's got a lovely run on Raikkonen. He's into the outside, into the Dallas Rossi chicane. Raikkonen will squeeze him. Stroll's not going to have any of it, though. That doesn't, that doesn't call us sight. Brilliant move. He had the inside line and the outside line. The gap, that was great. The gap between Albon and Hamilton is now just uh, five. five seconds. Yeah. 5.97 seconds. So it's closing down. Hamilton has turned that engine up to 11, I believe. Although, is he allowed? Have they changed the engine mode under the red flag knowing they had that penalty? Was that what all that was about with Joe Bauer? Look at this. Raikkonen tried to squeeze him. Lance Stroll had absolutely none of it. That was a brilliant move from Lance Stroll. And we don't often praise Lance, so we must praise him when we do. Look at this. No, he's not a bad driver. Yeah, but look at this, though. The battle forecast. Hamilton will catch Albon in one lap. Okay, so yeah, he's five, four seconds back now. And that's yeah. when we start seeing him going through the pack. Yeah, but is he going to run out of laps? Because if you look, there's only four seconds between 12th and Lewis. Yeah. Tell you one thing as well. Sorry, album. Tell you one thing as well. We haven't seen Bottas right. striking, have we? And here comes, look at this. Bottas has been left by Lando. Lando's going for a move on Raikkonen and does it. Lando gets it. So now Raikkonen becomes the train to Bottas. Bottas, though, Dad, isn't moving through the field. It's like we saw a couple no, of years ago. It's like we saw a couple of years ago. That Mercedes is good when it's out front, but as soon as it gets, it gets in dirty air, it goes. Well, we're about to see, to see because he's down yeah. to four seconds. But he's in clear air. And is that Bottas slowing? Who was that going offline? It was Bottas, just to try and call the engine. Bottas is not having a great race, is he? He's sixth at the moment. He's near his charge. Well, Verstappen's out, so he's going to go ahead of him in the championship. But he's trying to close down to Lewis. He's going outside the points, and he's not doing any good job. Well, I don't think Lewis will be outside the points. No, I think he might just get ninth or tenth. He might get eighth. I'm being realistic, he might get eighth. Because or maybe I'll end up in front of Bottas if this team orders, but I'm not sure how that's going to go at the moment. But this is an absolute cracker of a Grand Prix here in Italy, and it's shaping up to be an all-time Formula One classic. I'm saying that now. We've got the fight back from Hamilton, and now we've got Gasly versus Sainz and Stroll. And look at this, Lando Norris is joining the party. And this is just insanity. Gasly keeping that gap, 3.683 seconds. And of course, we've seen Pierre Gasly in the Formula 2 category, uh, Dad. We know exactly how good he is as soon as he's in free air. He can control that gap. This decision is so bad that next week I might watch MotoGP <laughs> instead. It's not on next weekend. This is San Marino. San Marino. Well, we're in the other part of Italy next week, in Tuscany, as Bottas goes through on Kimi Raikkonen into the Retifilio. He's been dealt with. I would love to say that, but unfortunately, you're live on air. No, I'm not. You are. Not after this I tell you Embarkle. what, I have forgot. Well, we're live next weekend. I think we've chosen the wrong weekend. Uh, once again, we never have any luck. We're doing them all next year. I can tell you that now. We're doing bloody all on live on air. Uh, language, Timothy. Ah, uh, I can just edit that bit out of the programme. Uh, Gasly from Science Stroll, top three. As, look at this. Science is closing on in six tenths a lap. This is not Formula One. And it's one second between Albon and Lewis. Oh, DRS has been activated as well. But look, Raikkonen is about to fall to... Uh, uh, Ricardo, Raikkonen has the DRS. We might just hold on for this straight. How long before Lewis gets through up to Raikkonen? Uh, well, here I would say three laps, we've four laps. We've opened up the box. <coughs> Look at this. He's already closing down on Albon. Is he going to make the move? Brilliant use of the battle graphic here. And look at the battle forecast. And they've Eight all, laps. They have all been told Lewis will be coming through and he's yeah. angry. Yeah, he is angry. Oh, break dust coming off the front of the rest of an Ocon there. That's something to watch out for. Kvyat's job, though, might Come be... Come on, Lewis. Tell you what, Danny Kvyat might be kicked out of Formula 1 because he's ninth and his teammates leading the Grand Prix at the moment. Bottas again, weaving on the straight. Ricard Raikkonen without any DRS. Here comes Ricardo. Pulls to the inside of the last moment of the Retifilio. Raikkonen went from first to third. Now he's off the track again. As big lock up further back again. That was Sergio Perez. First of all, Ricardo locked up. Here comes Lewis Hamilton, though. Looking to the inside into the Retifilio and not making a move. But he's got a good exit. Yes, he has. Coming out of the, the out of the Retifilio, down through the Curve de Sol towards the Curve de Grande, I should say, uh, before coming into 
Though Dallin Rogers should care, but he's just a bit too far back. That Mercedes is not good in, in dirty air already. Look, as soon as he gets dirty air, he's struggling. He might, he might pass Albon. Might get a couple. But Bottas isn't moving up positions, is he? He's only passing right and he's slow. Have faith. Come on, Lewis. This is so close now. There's only 16 in it, Lewis, so you can get into the points. He's 15 now, yeah, so yeah, it's easily. And oh, he's on, look at that, immediately in the toe, you saw that little flick coming into the second Lesmo. He has DRS compared to Albon now, down to Ascari, but I just don't think, look, he's already having to pull out of the toe in order to get any sort of slipstream. This is not working for Hamilton. The engine mode is wrong. 15 laps to go as the race is on here. This, if I was to go to somebody and say, guess who won the 2020 Italian Grand Prix? Oh yeah, it was Gasly, oh yeah, it was Sainz, oh yeah, it was Stroll. They'll go, yeah, what are you on? Well, we're on to this. Oh, good point. Wrong. I've just been, I've just been reminded, actually. Have you? Yeah, because my head reminded me. Lewis isn't going to win today, is he? So that 91st victory won't come next weekend in Tuscany. No. The next time he can do it is Russia. As here's Hamilton, he's in the DRS, visibly not closing at all to Albon, is he? What's the gap between the, all of them? Uh, not telling us. Uh, 43, uh, 22 seconds separate everyone in the battle. Giovinazzi is backed out of it. Both Alfa Romeo starting to fall back. Science starting to close the gap though, and it just increased as soon as I said it. 3.3. Gasly in control of this one. This is unbelievable stuff. Can an Italian team Albon's win? Albon's racing for his seat, so. Albon, yeah. Yeah, okay, he's going to try and uh, hold off as hold much as he can. Yeah. Lewis up as much as possible. He's the only Red Bull left in the race. Especially with uh, Sonoda coming into the battle and being dominant in Formula Two. He could also easily take over Albon. Or even Dan Tickton. Lewis isn't quite no, he got close enough at the go. Yeah, Cass as you say, he's affected yeah. by that turbulent air. And he's, oh, he, look, he's, he's pulling left and right down the back straight into Ascari. He's not getting it done. There's the helicopter. We never get a shot of that, really, so I'm glad we got a shot of that. Because that, medical, that um, TV helicopter does some insane shots as well. And he's looking, he's not going through there. That 40-53 of this insane Italian Grand Prix. <coughs> I'm just wondering, I just thought I heard Ted, but it's no Ted. As you can see, it's half a second between Alban and uh, Hamilton now. Is he going to try anything into the Retifilio? Look, at he's, he's gaining. This might be his best opportunity as pulls to the outside. The two, oh, that's, uh, that's oh, and Albon locks up and goes straight on. Albon got caught out by Grosjean locking up. And he got, he got the smoke, and then he got pushed out as well. So this is now uh, Russell versus Grosjean, and Hamilton versus Albon. Down now towards the Dallin Rogers chicane. Hamilton's on the outside. Grosjean defending the inside, and Hamilton's through. Hamilton's through the first one. And now he's and now got he's Russell. Got Russell. So, yeah, Russell couldn't get through there on Grosjean. It's hard for him. No, Williams. Although, look at that. Latifi's 11th. He could get points for uh, for Williams' last run as family-owned team. Yeah. Haircut loser. This is a replay from onboard with Hamilton because we have to dodge. But look, he pulls to the inside. Albon was already compromised from the speed of the exit of turn two. Easily done for Lewis in the end. But he couldn't do it, crucially, in dirty air. That was the point. The Mercedes, as we've always seen, is no good in the midfield in dirty air. Because look at Bottas. He's now 1.1 seconds behind Norris. And look, Lewis now. Lewis. Look, he's pulling out to try and get some sort of air coolant because the car just isn't working. Look, you can see him shaking his head in the car. Did you see? Lewis is not happy for a number of reasons right now. Yeah, this is going to be a test of Lewis. Um. Science closing down on Gasly. Here comes Hamilton again. DRS for both of them. I think George pulled out the way there. He knew he was not going to get ahead. And Hamilton breezes past the Williams. He's now got Grosjean in front of him. Yeah, these two don't have any history, do they? Yeah, that would be interesting. And they're fighting for position as well, yeah, so Grosjean's got hold of it. They're nowhere near as good a driver as Lewis. No, but they do crash into each other a lot, and that's mainly Grosjean's fault. Uh, Gasly and Sainz, the gap now down to 2.7 seconds. I'm looking, actually. Sainz and Gasly have got a comfortable lead of five seconds to stroll. So, yeah, the gaps that you now see on your screen are to each other's drivers, so the, to the driver in front. And that's why we're seeing Ocon in the battle. <coughs> Ocon's closing down. So, to, out of this race, Verstappen, Leclerc, Magnussen and Vettel, Leclerc causing the red flag. All drivers are okay, luckily, especially Leclerc. The Marshal's okay as well. We even saw Leclerc running back to the pit lane. We haven't seen him after, though, have we? He's in the medical centre. That's, why, that's where he is. Medical centre. Lewis on the back. 
and he's going to try and pull to the inside. Grosjean pulls to the right. Hamilton isn't alongside him. Now, isn't that a shocker? Not really. It's the, it's it's the air again. He's got to. He, he remember. He'll have him. Yeah, go on. He's got to pick his moment because, as you say, he knows what Grosjean's like. It's an easy pass in the end. Yeah, with the DRS, although Grosjean's staying with him into the Retifilio. Whoever breaks latest will have the position. Grosjean's going to fight him on it, but decides to back no, out like, of it. Grosjean's just yeah. trying to make himself look good to yeah. Gene Haas. And he, uh, Hamilton breezes past in the end, so he's up to 12th Can't place. Hamilton will get into the points, but it's the question is, can he fight back? Because we're running out of laps here. If Hamilton wins this race... I'll be amazed. Hamilton's got to get to as close to Bottas with Verstappen being out as possible. Yeah, because the point... Lewis is going to leave here championship leader regardless, 47 yeah. points, but... Uh, but he's he, he yeah. lead. Needs that lead. Which should have been outstanding, won't be... At it, the end of this one. It will be slightly shorter if he can't get past Bottas. So he'll be down to 30-something points at the moment with Bottas in fifth place. Battle for seventh between Raikkonen and Ocon and Kvyat. This is the battle that Hamilton's going to be joining, but he's now got three seconds to close to Latifi. And we've only got 11 laps to go. I know. This is. I think he, as, that's why I said, it's realistically, he might get eighth or seventh at best if he, if he catches this battle. Look, he's just at the back there of this tail group. So it is going to be a, the top five who can win this Grand Prix. But it's going to be, it's, I think, Gasly. Science is better, uh, lapping better. I think Science is just starting to save his tyres as well for a last lap punch, you know, the last sector punch. Here comes Ocon on Raikkonen. Raikkonen pulls to the inside, coming into the retrofit. Filio, not getting a move there. There's your race leader, Pierre Gasly. Hasn't led since he was crowned champion in the mid-contact. Ocon hits the back of Kimi Raikkonen's car and loses a bit of front wing. End plate. Look, it's gone. Yeah. And that's going to give... Oh, these two nearly came together in the red... Uh, these two nearly came together in qualifying yesterday and then come together again today. And Ocon breezes past ahead now of Raikkonen. Raikkonen losing time. Hamilton is going to have to push harder and harder. This is his best opportunity to get through. Look, Raikkonen's understeering everywhere now. Top corner, your race leader, Pierre Gasly, who is currently leading the Grand Prix by 2.8 seconds to Carlos Sainz. Who is going to win? Can I just say, everyone in the top four, first-time winner if they win. Um, Lewis is coming up to Latifi now. Mm, he's just closed the gap, actually. I think the chief is at the back of this party. Yeah. Ten laps to go. There he is. He's closing visibly. Oh, uh, is this going to be Kvyat making a move on Raikkonen? No. Too far. He'll make a move down to turn one. Renault are getting excited in their pit garage, I can tell you. Everyone's getting a bit excited, really. I feel sorry for Jensen Button, though, who has to interview the drivers yeah, the after shine, the race. The shine has gone off this Grand Prix in a lot of ways. But it's going to be fun for the first-time winner, though, as Kvyat breezes oh, past Raikkonen. It's, it's a classic. It's already moulded into some sort of classic. And look at that, big round of applause. How these guys, Alfa Torrey, how much is their hearts beating right now that they've got a car in eighth and a car leading the Grand Prix? Toro Rosso, of course... Uh, and now, here's the thing, Alfa Romeo have won at this track, sorry, Alfa Torre have won at this track before, because they asked for the Toro Rosso stats to still be the same. He means the stature yeah. of, of Formula One. What, the fact that Hamilton got that penalty? To give Hamilton and Giovinazzi a penalty for when the, it clearly was no, no indication near. at the entrance to the pits that they weren't yeah. to go in. I'm in agreement with you. We know the fact that it was closed. The thing we all disagree on is the fact that he wasn't informed to the teams or, the, or came up on our yeah. timing monitors in here, which is surprising. Giovinazzi's on his own now at the moment, as Bottas is finally closing behind Lando Norris. I think this might be a battle. Bottas is now on a charge. Oh, and Lando got very wide at the exit of the Parabolica. And Bottas is going to have the DRS as well. That's going to be something to watch out for. And he's not getting it, is he? Lando's looking at his mirror. Bottas isn't going for the move. Dirty air again affects him Valtteri in the Mercedes because he's close with the DRS, but he's nowhere near him on the lap. Oh, well, look at this. Science now, 1.997, 9.47. 9 Hamilton about to take Latifi. Pulls to the inside into turn one. Not Didn't go for it as well. This is it. Mercedes can run up on the straights, but as soon as they get to the corners, they're left behind. The car, not good in dirty air. We knew that from years ago, Mercedes. We thought they'd fixed it, but obviously they haven't. And that's a shocker again. Is he going to get him into 
Uh, yes, he is. Hamilton makes the move on Latifi for 11th place. Gets it done into the Dalavaji Chicane. I think he just made a bit of oversteer. I thought for a second Latifi hit him. But Hamilton with oversteer at the exit of Dalavaji. But now he is Hamilton, now ahead. one and a half seconds uh, between Perez. him and Perez. Which I said at the start of this um, little escapade from the back that Perez would be, um, with Verstappen gone, the hardest person to pass. I think you're right. And uh, Perez at the moment, I can't even see him on this graphic. There he is. He's in the battle, isn't he, with Raikkonen. He's in the battle with Raikkonen. It's clearly excited you. It's depressed me. It's yeah. exciting me. It's depressing you. But look at this. That might excite you. Last win from McLaren, our own Jensen Button. Brazil, 2012. Eight years of hard work. Oh, definitely. I'd like to see McLaren, because Lewis can't win this race now. No. Um, but uh, I'd like to see McLaren or Norris. I don't think Norris is going to win. Norris or Sainz yeah. win. I think Sainz might be our best bet. Look at that. 1.608 seconds. It's getting closer. Move going on further back. That was Perez getting past Raikkonen. Hamilton's in that mix as well. Did he make a move? I can't see anything on the monitor. I think Hamilton has just got past. Raikkonen retakes Perez in a battle. We'd much rather see a uh, TV director and Raikkonen keeps ahead of Perez as they went side by side. And now Perez has got back ahead of Raikkonen and Hamilton's joining the party. Here it is, look on board. Look at that. Perez now defends on the inside of the Della Roggia and can't get through. And how Hamilton joins it coming into Lesmo. Raikkonen half its energy. Lewis backs off, gets the power. Look at how much the understeer that, that Mercedes is getting due to the fact of being in a tow. And he's not quick at all coming out the corners. He's slower, accelerating than the Alpha. He's got the DRS now. He will have the advantage. Pulls to the inside into Ascari. And Hamilton is into the points again. He's top 10. Yeah. And now he sets after Perez, who you said would be a bit tricky. 1.5, 1.3 seconds. 1.302. Sainz is coming to play. And he's going to bug over it. If McLaren win this, this will be the best day for McLaren, a redemption, and if Gasly starts to fall off with tyres, look out for Lando Norris getting a podium, because Stroll will surely get past him, we're into the closing stages of the Italian Grand Prix, where everything has happened, this is amazing Grand Prix racing, so how are you looking again, come on Lewis, take him, <coughs> he's got a nice run at him, out of Retifilio. And there's our race leader. Oh, this is the battle for the lead. It's getting close. The graphic from, uh, says that Sainz will be in closing distance and within one lap, I think I believe it as well. Lance Stroll is joining the party as well. A three-way fight for the lead between three different teams. Something that has not happened in Formula One in decades. This is a brilliant racing. It's been orchestrated though. Yes, but if you must admit, Stroll was leading it this. Is what it is. You must remember, Stroll was leading this race, but lost it to Gasly and Sainz at the start. Gasly, 1.4 seconds. Sainz just behind. It feels like I'm commentating on an F2 race rather than an F1 at the moment with this front. 1.599 seconds. Stroll closing in as well. The gap closing. He started. For his career best result was fourth, achieved in Germany 2019. Gasly's never been on the podium, and now he could end up winning a Grand Prix. This is and insanity. would you say that Gasly might take Albon's seat back? Yes, if he wins if this he race. If he wins this race. If he wins this race, Red Bull will promote him immediately, won't they? I um, think they, they, they will start to think about it because he's yeah. clearly a better driver than he was when he left them. And yeah, he's, he's improved a hell of a lot. And even Albon has sort of Come struggled. Come on, Lewis. Point one of a second behind Perez. He roped up the battle graphic now. Is he going to get through? He's got a he's got an okay, I'd say bad exit out of Retifilio. Coming through the curve this as is a the, This is the one that, that even Lewis will think. This is going to be tricky. This is going to be tricky. Perez in that similar car to him, of course. Because they haven't changed that much, the Mercedes, from year to year. And this, he's basically fighting a Mercedes. And we know how good Perez is. But a Stroll is up into third place at the moment, as we know. And the gap now, 1.5 seconds. Stroll's beginning to save his tyres to go on the last lap run. We're going to have a fight for the win. 
and this is going to be finished. Look at that, Carlos Sainz, podium last year in Brazil. He was so annoyed because it was because Hamilton got a penalty that Sainz was on the podium, but the ceremony had already happened. He never got to go on the podium and spray the champagne. His team went up with him after the race and had a celebration. He wants, a, he wants another podium. More importantly, he can smell a victory in Formula 1 with five laps to go. It all comes down to this. Gasly versus Sainz and Stroll in a race that we thought was going to be a whitewash for the Mercedes team in, with fastest in every single session. This is insanity. And look at Hamilton. He's going to the DRS zone of Perez. Is he going to make the move? Well, Perez moves to the inside. Hamilton goes to the outside. It's a question of who breaks latest. Hamilton looks to be ahead. And he is ahead. Hamilton yeah, tonight. Lewis takes that position. Now he's got two seconds to Kvyat, and I don't think he can get anywhere else. I think Hamilton might just stay there. No, I think he'll get Kvyat, and he'll go for Ocon because he's got to get as close to Bottas as he can. The gap between... No, he's got seven seconds between Ocon and him. I think Hamilton can only get Kvyat next. That was an easy move in the end, wasn't it? He just had to wait yeah. for the DRS. But the, Lewis is lapping at about four seconds a lap faster than most. He is. And Sainz backed off, actually. 1.6 now, the gap. 1.7 as Gasly is weaving down the straight. This is just insane. No fans in attendance, but everyone watching on their television. Well, Lewis, Lewis, Lewis's best chance is seventh. <coughs> yeah, I agree. His best chance is seventh, if he can get that seven-second gap. I'm having a look, actually. It's 1.7 seconds between Kvyat and Ocon, so he might actually get Ocon, but he definitely won't get Ricardo. Too much time. Science Radio. Consider sock switch to get inside DRS. Consider sock switch. Okay. That sock switch as well is just located underneath the steering wheel down to the bottom. You flick it and it gives you more power, but it's only not, it's not changing the engine mode, it's increasing the ERS development uh, usage as well, so the battery. There's Helen. Look at Louise. There, there's Louise there, there's Helen, who's the media manager. She's watching on as well, knowing that she could be tweeting a victory for McLaren. I haven't seen Louise that nervous since her brother won in GP2. Yeah. Louise is very nervous as well. Everyone's very nervous because this is going to be a barnstorm a bit wide out of Lesmo 2 down the back straight towards oh, this is the cover to salt down towards um, Ascari when you think about the, 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 the difference in those two cars as well um, Gasly is driving his socks off this is incredible this is absolutely incredible. Gasly really is driving his socks off. I think we're going to stay with the battle for the lead now as Ricardo's closing down on Bottas. Wouldn't that be embarrassing if Renault Power get the head of Bottas? Well, the best thing for Lewis is if Danny takes with yes. Bottas off. You're right. That will increase his championship. But look at this. The three laps to go. The best Mercedes engine is Lance Stroll. The best Ferrari engine is Pierre Gasly. The best Renault engine is McLaren of Carlos Sainz. All these cars here are customer teams and they're one, two, three, four in the race behind all of the factory, in front of all the factory runners. That is incredible. This is the day of the underdogs in Monza and this is going to be one that is remembered for a long, long time going forward. And this is getting so close now. He was a tenth slower on the last lap. Gasly's starting to feel the pressure. Got my set together, for sake. Copy. Three laps to go. Three laps to go, Carlos. Maximum focus now. No mistakes. After being... Yeah, 1.3 seconds. Sainz now begin to push side by side. Hamilton and Kvyat. This is for the eighth place. Kvyat not wanting to go. Look at Hamilton. Wheel to wheel. He's enjoying this one, isn't he? And he yeah. easily breezes past There's Kvyat. Eight for, that's eight for Hamilton. And I think... Lewis, ooh, you're two doing seconds. brilliantly. Two seconds to walk on. I don't think he's going to get him in two laps. Hamilton will end in eighth place. But crucially, cru cru Daddy, he's got that fastest that bonus point. Yeah, that's the, it's still there, isn't it? So that's five points instead of the four, and this is how he did it. And that actually that neutralizes the advantage that Bottas would get from finishing where he is. Yeah. So the points gap stays the same, which is bizarre. But I think that's what Hamilton was driving for. He got a good exit out of the Retifilio. Kvyat didn't, and it just enabled him to go so well around the Cola Grande. I'm looking, the gap is closing, 1.189 as the drivers cross the line to start lap 52 of 53, Gasly closing in to the Retifilio, as our graphics are now actually caught up with the television. I don't it? actually think the McLaren can catch him. I don't think it is. I think what, I tell you what though, 1.6, the, 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 um, the, the last, last lap. two laps, um, the, he's more than held his own. It's going to be a last lap. the same, aren't they? Yeah, it's going to be a last lap shootout, I think we're going to see either one of these drivers is going to win their first ever race. 
Science has done what he's told, he's turned something up. Carlos, you are a second, no mistakes, let's keep it clinical. I want this, Tom. <coughs> Everyone wants you to get it. Go on, Carlos. Give it the beans. What's the gap now? 1.2 seconds. Has he got DOS? He was sliding it. Look at that McLaren. He's sliding everywhere. 1.2 seconds. 1.162. He'll have DRS if he can get a good exit out of a Scarry. He's in it. Can he get the detection point? Where is the detection point? I'm having a look at my monitor. The activation zone, the, sorry, the detection zone, comes out to the parabolica. 1.084, come on Carlos, keep with him. 1.9 seconds, 0.946, does he have the activation zone? It's just there, he's got it! He's gonna have DRS, going on to the last lap. He's dropped behind a second, but he got the activation zone. It's the last lap of the Italian Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz versus Pierre Gasly. Sainz has the DRS, he's got it now. Gasly's just waiting for him. He's got another chance though. It's a last lap showdown. When was the last time this happened in Formula One? It's, I'm getting shades of Schumacher versus Alonso and Imola in 05 and 06. I cannot remember the last time he went to the last lap. But Carlos is pushing him, pushing him, pushing him into Dalla Roggia. He's closer, has to back out of it. But Gasly's in at maximum attack, so is Sainz. Nice exit out of Dalla Roggia. Lesmo 1 and Lesmo 2. The second and last DRS detection is coming out of the Lesmos. He's going to have to make a move into Ascari. I don't think he's got the power. Has he got it? Gasly's pushing for everything. Sainz opens up the DRS. It's a drag run now to the line. Into the last sector. Sainz is right there. Looks to the inside. I don't think he's got it down. I think it's Gasly's. Yeah, I really I do. He's got this. Coming out now. Of Ascari. The long he's got drag. One more chance. Grosjean's up to 12th. Raikkonen's down to 13th. Hamilton's passed Ocon. Sainz is closing Seven. him. Seventh for Lewis. Oh, he might do it. He might do it. He's getting there. Into the last corner. Maximum attack. He's got the DRS. Can he do it? It's a drag race to the line. I don't think he's going to do it. Side by side. Who's going to win the Italian Grand Prix? Pierre Gasly wins the Italian Grand Prix. An Italian team wins. It's Alpha Terray. Gasly is a first time winner. Carlos Sainz finishes second. Four tenths across the line. And Lance Stroll is in third place. Alpha Terray for the second time win at Monza. And Gasly wins. France Trust is delighted. The entire team are delighted. Pierre Gasly, a Formula One winner. McLaren happy with the podium. Disappointed it's not the race win. But four tenths of the line was absolutely fantastic. It's Honda victorious. It's Alpha Terre victorious. And Pierre Gasly, a man dropped by Red Bull in the middle of half of last year, comes back fighting. And not only beats the Red Bulls, he takes oh victory at Monza. What did you do? What did you do? You've got to be happy for Pierre. First victory in 109 races. Yeah, you've got to be happy after all these happened in his career and uh, things like that. This is a great day for him. You can see his team running there. The um, Red Lewis, Bull. Has, Lewis has done amazing. He's got up to P7. Seven. P7. Stick it to the FIA. Right. You know, if that's the only way you can get an Italian team to win the Italian <laughs> Grand Prix, <laughs> by, it, that yeah. is ridiculously cheating. I'm sorry, but that the FIA is, needs a bit look at themselves. If you make the mistake and don't do the things, it doesn't matter what it says in the rules and regulations. You make the mistake, own up to what you made. Yeah, right? don't penalise the don't drivers. Don't do this, penalise drivers. Oh. Giovinazzi and Lewis were penalised because you made a mistake. But great, great day for both Sainz oh, and for Gasly. Race, uh, great, great race in the last P2, three laps. I know you wanted Brilliant. to win, but you're P2, buddy. That's a really good result. It's been, you've been great all weekend. You've been great all weekend and made up for that red flag. Great work, mate. Yeah, I don't know what to do now for the break. Nice. Oh, I, oh, so close, but yet so far. One more lap. I need one more lap. Oh, I, one more lap, yeah.
I mean, must say he should have gone for it on lap 50 rather than lap 53. But for Pierre Gasly, who was yet to score a point at the Italian Grand Prix, his best result at the circuit was last year, 11th. He's gone 10 better and wins. That is brilliant. And honestly, for Pierre Gasly, look at that. When was the last time? There was a meme going around saying, why is it always the U3 of Hamilton, Bottas and Verstappen? Look at that. A new top three. Gasly, Sainz and Lance Stroll. Do three you know they teams. made another mistake? They waved in the wrong McLaren. Yeah, they should have. They should have got. And now uh, you've got yeah. you've got Lando is packed to the left of it instead is of he? in that. What yeah. is it? Is it is it uh, not Carlos? No, you know, Carlos is parked in the right position. Oh, Lando's parked the wrong They spot. saw an orange McLaren, waved him through, then, then, then Lando thought, where the hell am I supposed to go? Right? Look and at so this. So it's parked to the, to the they, right. Look at this. The Alpha to Ray team bursting through the uh, hoardings there. This is their second victory in Formula One, both at Monza, 11 years Apart. And Sebastian Vettel was the uh, previous Toro Ross. Yes, yeah. Vettel. And hopefully the floodgates will open for Pierre Gasly now. The first French yeah, I, I winner. I honestly think that uh, poor Alex is under threat now for his seat because of the fact that the way they work it. The, fir uh, yeah, the first French winner since Alain Prost. Yeah. I can't think of one since. Um, the, 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 the Red Bull drivers are all under contract to Red Bull Racing, right? And, and not to the two, you know, it's a situation where they can, they can change their drivers easily. Olivier Panis, the last French winner in Formula One at the Monaco Grand Prix in 1996. He was the last a French and there's, winner. And there's Leclerc. What's that? 24 Remember, years. Leclerc, Leclerc, and, and Leclerc and Anton Hubert and that. And, and uh, Gasly and Ocon. yeah, uh, and they've all grown up yeah. together. This will mean a lot to Pierre Gasly. Carlos Sainz as well. And look at that. He's even congratulating the Alfa team. What a sport! And there's McLaren, happy with the podium. And Claire Williams. The last Grand Prix for Williams. Latifi 11th. Latifi 11th, Russell 14th. A Le mighty she's good got a result. a smile on her face, but she looks like she's also got a bit of a tear. Which, uh, That's a great result as well for Williams. 11th and 14th for the team. That gets them ahead in the constructors as well, not with points. But I think Lewis ahead. socked it to him. Came in coming yes. seventh from being 35 seconds behind the pack. That is incredible. We thought we were in for an easy day, didn't we, Dad? Oh, an hour 13 minutes, that'll be it. Two hours later, we're still here in the box, and we've just had our first time winner. Yeah, it's going to really muck up things uh, yeah. for the after shows for yeah, everyone. everybody. I'd just like to point out as well, a new top three, they are all customer teams. Wow. And also, would you like to know something else? Minardi have just won a Grand Prix. Because Alfa Torre was Toro Rosso, was Midlands, Minardi. became Minardi. So Minardi have just won, basically. How's that for style? That is, oh. that, you know, Mr. Stollard. Jordan a third and McLaren second. If you want, if you want to go deeper. Yeah, to the older ones. Yeah. yeah. That is a fantastic podium. It's Gasly, Sainz and Stroll, your top three from Norris fourth. And that's just an incredible top four. It's the day of the underdogs here in Monza. We have them occasionally and yeah. you have to draw a line under them. I mean, Lewis is the type that he will draw a line under this um, oh, yeah. after this race. Yeah. But he'll have a lot to say after... after Let's go down. Doing the rest of this this, this program. Let's go down to Jensen Button. Here's Jensen. Oh, was it Jensen? I'm and JB. He's going to have the fun. Well, well, that was a, an extremely exciting Italian Grand Prix 2020. We're here with Lance. And Lance, fantastic podium finish. Are you happy with that P3? I am. Um, it's been a couple of years since I stood on a podium, so it feels good to be back. It was such a crazy race. Um, I'm so happy for Pierre. I think he, you know, he really deserved it. He had a great start, uh, and he just stayed consistent all the way throughout the race. So, um, yeah, it, it kind of—it's a bit of a bummer. I think it was kind of mine to lose there, starting from second. Um, but I just had no grip at the start, and I, I had a ton of wheel spin, and everyone flew by me. But I, you know, I had a, a good scrap with Carlos there in the first couple laps. I overtook him around the outside, and then he got me again down into turn one. So. We were battling out there, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm happy to pick up third. Um, 
I think the wind slipped away from us today, but you know, the third is great. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic result. The, the podium, such a young podium, the young guns on the podium is fantastic to see. How, how strange is it starting a race again halfway through? It's bizarre. I mean, you know, you got to reset. Um, we're not used to that intermission um, halfway through a race. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, great to great to finish third. Congratulations, Carlos. Carlos, you went brave, eh? Carlos, what a drive. You know, you, you've been getting the maximum out of the car for so many races in this McLaren. Um, I'm sure it's exciting. It's great to get a P2, but you were so close. You pushed him so hard there at the end. Yeah. I, it's incredible that way. I'm the, like halfway disappointed with P2, you know. I wouldn't have believed that, uh, that I would have got a chance to fight for victory today. Uh, we were very, very close. But honestly, with a normal race, I think I would have caught P2 behind Lewis because we had really, really good pace. So I think it's what we deserve, but Pierre there in front is like, wow, how, how good that happened. But uh, yeah, I guess a bit of bad luck with the safety car, but then uh, we did a good job to, to recover it and with the red flag. But so uh, very happy with P2. We've been super quick all week and I could feel like I could dominate the midfield pretty easily today. So I get to be happy with that. Yeah, this, is, this isn't a lucky P2. Oh, you didn't luck in with the safety car or strategy. I you was guys have just it. been quick all weekend. Yeah, I think especially getting back from P6 to, to P2 and then chasing Pierre and managing to, to finish three or four tenths behind on the flag. We need to be proud of that. We need to be proud of the pace of the car. And then that red flag, I think I would have finished behind Lewis today, but uh, it's what it is. Congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations to McLaren as well. You know, this is a, another good step forward for them this weekend. Sensational, you know, in your short period in Formula One, you've been through so much, so much of emotion, highs, lows. This is phenomenal. It's uh, it must feel very special. Honestly, it's it's unbelievable. I'm I'm not realizing what's happening right now. You know, it was such a crazy race, um, and then yeah, we capitalized on the red flag. Uh, the car was fast. We had the pretty fast car behind us, and. I mean, as you said, I've been through so much in the space of 18 months. My first podium last year, I was already like, wow, with AlphaTauri and now my first win in Formula One in Monza. It's, yeah, I, I struggle to realize. Yeah, and uh, the emotion for your team, you know, in Italy, they've won as an Italian team. You can see what it means to them and it must be so nice celebrating with them. I, I've got no words. I, I have no words and you know this team have done so much for me. They gave me my first opportunity in F1. They gave me my first podium. Now they are giving me my first win. It's it's crazy. Honestly, it's just crazy and I'm so happy. I can't thank them enough. Everybody from Afatari to Honda. I mean, it's a power sensitive track and we won the race side of all the Mercedes, Ferrari and Renault cars. So. It's just an amazing day. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm 100% correct, but I think you're the first French winner since 1996. That's right. Olivier, 20, Olivier Panis was years. the last one. and I've always said coming in F1, okay, that's one thing we need to to change because it's been so long, but I never expected that it would happen to us with, um, with Alpha Tauri. And we just kept focusing on ourselves since last year, working, improving step by step. and. It's crazy, honestly. I'm just so happy. Congratulations, Thanks. Pierre. Go and, go and enjoy it with your Thanks. team. On Friday. And that was just a sheer... I don't want to say dominance because, as you said in there, Dad, it was hampered by the Mercedes penalty. But it was a clear penalty, but it was the, for the wrong reasons as well. I still disagree that it was a... a, a yeah. A, a, I, if you make a mistake... Yeah. ...and you're the people running it, then the... the, the competitors mm. shouldn't take the rap right that's a beautiful image look at that that was four yes, tenths those the two lights were on yeah right but, but it was the fact there was no that was just safety car there's no signal saying that the pit lane was closed we no. didn't even get one but apparently it was closed that was the problem 
the, the, the pit lane was closed, but so nobody got told. The drivers have to be clairvoyant now. Yeah, because nobody got told the pit lane was closed. We were surprised the pit lane was closed. I guessed it. Yeah, you guessed it. When they did yeah. pit. I don't know if, if it's only because of our graphic system, whether or not Sky noticed the pit lane was closed or not. But well, we there'll be a big inquest into this. Yeah. But the race is done now. Gasly now, just has qu- yeah. won his first race, and that's all that matters now. Sky Sports get um, the equipment that the FAA do. The teams get what we watch. The same thing. Yeah. The same FIA messaging system. So it didn't come up automatically that the pit lane was closed. We had to go finding it to say pit lane was closed. So look at that. Pierre Gasly winner. Let's hear from George I'm Russell. I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, say to Claire and Frank, thank oh. you so much for everything you've done for me, for the whole team. It's going to be uh, a shame to see you leave. We'll, uh, we'll really miss you and... Uh, yeah, just thank you. thank you from the bottom of my heart. Also. George Russell being honest there, Clear Williams stepping away from the team principal role. Look at this, the TV coming home in 11th place as well. Let's hear from him. Claire, I'm, I'm sure you're going through a world of emotions right now. I just wanted to say one last time, thank you for everything you've done for me, for, for giving me this opportunity. I know I'm going to miss you, F1 is going to miss you, just be sure that we'll keep pushing 100% to bring the Williams name back to where it belongs. Wishing you, Mark, Nate, the best in wherever life takes you next. Thank you. Thank you. Pair of the Williams driver there, Dad uh, being very honest, and look at Claire Williams crying. crying. Claire's actually crying on the pit wall. And 11th and 14th in the race today is a fantastic end to the Williams She's legacy. such a strong woman, but, you know, yeah. emotion gets every one of us. Her me choice more, as well. Me more than that. Yeah, her choice as well to leave. Her choice because she wants to spend more time with her family. And it's very hard after being the guy, the guy or the girl who makes the decisions for seven years. There was a great shot yesterday when um, Mick, Mick came, came out, out. Yeah, on the podium, yeah. And there was a shot of him. Yeah, and, and his, his dad, dad, Michael. You know, when Mick won the F2 yesterday. I don't know what you mean. It's very hard for Claire. She says herself she doesn't want to run the team when she can't run it. Well, now. Way, running for someone else. No. Two seconds, got the podium here. Um, Lance Joel coming on to third place then. He's second ever podium in Formula One. Lance Joel, he's two, his second one. But his first one was after the event of the podium and now this one takes place without fans so and it's at this great place so we're gonna have to feel sorry for him but the winner of the italian grand prix in 2020 alfa Torre or toro rosso it's the same team it's the same stats their second victory here at monza and their second formula one victory but a new winner in formula one he was dominant in formula two he's the formula two champion no less from 2018 and now He's on to the podium for the first time as a Formula One Grand Prix winner. And for the first time since the 1996 Monaco Grand Prix, we are going to hear the French national anthem, followed by the Italian. They will never... No, waiting. Here's the French national anthem. And Pierre Gasly winning for Alpha Tauri.
Shaq Latif. Thank you. Didier Peroni, Patrick Tombre, Moses Trigadant, uh, Patrick Depaye as well, Jean Pierre Jalbere, uh, Francois Servet, Jean Pierre Ballest, and now Pierre Gasly. He's just been added to this list, as well as Jean Alesi, winners of the Grand say, Prix. Well, lazy. And of course, Allah, of course, Olivier Pro. Oli uh, Olivier Palmes. Thank you. I'm having a right time this afternoon, aren't I? He lifts the trophy. He is a winner in Formula One. The constructors for Alpha Terray, their second win, and their second first, and the second podium here at Monza. McLaren taking on the podium. A step in the right direction for McLaren, isn't it? Yeah, great day for McLaren there. Um, and uh, the, ra the, uh, the only Merc on the podium is, is um, yeah. Lance Stroll. In a Mercedes, in a Mercedes engine. Mercedes and a Mercedes in from a last pink year. Mer pink Merc. And it's champagne time for three constructors of factory making engines it's the customers on top look at this the day of the underdogs an italian team wins a monza it's not ferrari it's alfa Torre. and this is going to go down ferrari shambles both out of the race and it's alfa Torre picks up the gauntlet an Italian team wins at Monza, and it's Alfa Torre. It's yep, fantastic. Ferrari are now second place in Italy. Yeah, Alfa Torre top dogs. I can't believe we've actually had an Italian winner, and it's not Ferrari. Alfa Torre wins their home race. And, of course, they have another chance, because next weekend we're in Tuscany. Yeah. In Mugello for Ferrari's 1,000th Grand Prix. I think this is going to cause eruptions throughout the world, though. Yeah, I agree. Because Controversial it, race. Because, uh, you know... Pierre's crying. Sorry, Pierre's crying on the podium, look. Yeah. It's a great day for that lad. He's very emotional. Everything he's been through over the past year as well. Even just last week when he was remembering Antoine Hubert. We understand he says on the radio, that one's for Antoine. Oh, great. I'm just reading it on my watch as well. Yeah, he said on the radio, that one's for Antoine. So he's dedicated the race win to He's actually Bear. surrounded by people that he raced with in GP2 and yeah. GP3. Carlos Sainz and Lance Stroll, of course. Pierre Gasly, Grand Prix winner. The first French you winner see, when, they were, when they were in GP3 and GP2, right, um, it was a case, it's not so much now, yeah. right, where where they all ate together, played together. Yeah, all of them. And, you know, it, it, their lives were so intertwined. And I think this is going to be an image that will be on all the front of the Italian and French newspapers next year. I've got something to cheer about. Yeah, I? look at that. Pierre Gasly, the roller coaster of emotion. I feel great is, for him, yeah, but not two seconds. for... Pierre Gasly, the roller coaster he's been on, losing his best friend and roommate Anton Hubert last year, being dropped by Red Bull, brings him back and wins for Alfa Torre and wins at Monza, the team's home race, and becomes the first French winner since 1996. He cannot believe it. I know, he just said that in English. Yeah, can't believe it. That, I, mean, I can't believe it. That image will be beamed all the way around the world. A Grand Prix winner, Ferrari finished that race 18th and 20th, both retired. That is insane. Pierre Gasly wins the Italian Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz is second, Lance Stroll third. We stay in Italy now for another race. Next time out, it's Tuscany. We move to Mugello. We're live all weekend for that one. But nothing can top Monza, Dad. Gasly and Sainz and Stroll being on the podium is a plus for Formula One. Yep. The negativity of the decision against Lewis Hamilton will just cause a lot of headlines throughout yeah. the world for it's, the wrong reasons. We've got a race review and a half later on. I think we'll get the table out and we'll sit no. down later and be all nice and comfy because we've got a lot to discuss. But we'll be back. Your driver of the day, quick. Um, Gasly. Lovely. Thanks, Dad. Megan will return next weekend as well as Dad for the Tuscan Grand Prix. From us all here, though, a new race winner in Formula One, our 109th different winner, it's Pierre Gasly.